Is it recording? <laughs> <laughs> It, it was, was like it only was, my breath was away from you. It was so, it it was, dude, you it were so was zoomed such, out it that it was tiny sliver. <laughs> I was like, Ugh. God damn it. What's yeah. up, everyone? Welcome to episode 10 of the Party Crashers podcast. Hey, yo. Alex, do you want to know what my notes say? My, my notes say the first sentence to say is, Alex, you dusty son of a bitch. What have you been playing lately? That's the greatest. <laughs> Why am I dusty son of a bitch? I don't know. Bitch? I don't know. Am I older? I heard that? somebody call somebody else I'm not older a dusty you. ass the other no, day. I am older than and I was like, ooh, nice. That's a that's a funny way that's a funny thing to call somebody. What'd you ask me? What have I been playing? What do you put that's how we start all these fucking things. That's, I'm still not used to it ten segments in. Or ten not segments. Ten okay. episodes. Yeah. We'll get there. Um No Man's Sky? Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Got so fine. backstory to the to, to oh, the, okay. the listeners okay. here. Send it. Um, no Man's Sky no sucked Man's, for two years. No Man's Sky, we have gone on the record of saying that we absolutely hated that game. Not, I mean, we liked the idea of it, but a million things were promised. They were not given to us, and the game that we did get was not enough to keep us playing. It felt very repetitive. You were doing the same thing over and over again. We did a whole... I think the very first video we ever did with Rosemary Media is the four of us... I called it Four Guys on the Couch. Yeah. It was the four of us sitting in that room... Um, that we used to record the Rosemary Live stuff. Me, you, Connor, Casey, just Sh- ripping shit all shit over. Shit all Sky. over. And I think it was on the one year anniversary. It of was the, the one year anniversary of the game. It was so fucking funny. Since then, a lot has changed. No Man's Sky Next has been released, and we now have um, multiplayer. We have like we can do things co-op. There's space building, but that was from a while ago. But we haven't been playing. We have it not the last played the game year. since the launch. So yeah. we were introduced to base building. We were introduced to the uh, land vehicle. We were introduced to the uh, terrain tool, which I think is new to the next update. Yeah. Um, whole bunch of shit's been done. Polishing. Um, game still runs a little rough on mm-hmm. PS4. But Did you watch the clip of me? Yes. <laughs> Where you go from the tunnel to, <laughs> to the top. Yeah. You know, just I start falling again. Yeah. yeah I'm like, there's, well, there's still there's some, still some bugs. Yeah. A little bugger buggeroos in there. Um, yeah, Snow Man Sky, uh, still playing Final Fantasy. Well, we're not done. Back up, back oh, up. Oh, we're not done? You gotta oh, hit back God. on No Man's Sky. What we, about No Man's Sky? I um, I don't know. The whole idea of it is just so interesting to me. I, okay. I have to give Sean Murray credit as much as that pains me. They could have easily, if they wanted to money grab, release this as No Man's Sky 2. If they, because it's it really does feel like a totally different game when you add in the multiplayer and you add in all this stuff. Well, they not even that. They changed even like the resources mm-hmm. around and like all the recipes. I mean, graphical updates, like everything, everything in the game has changed. Like they, in like the third person perspective, like that changes the game completely. Yeah, it does. That's a huge game changer. It's what all the details it is like all you gotta do is fucking turn mm-hmm. on well, like, third person no the thing and is when no Man's change. Guy released your character didn't have a model like there was no character that's why if you if you maybe did see somebody in the world you didn't see him because their character wasn't there yeah so I don't know I think that they could have very well released this as No Man's Sky 2 but Sean Murray and Hello Games they knew that like they fucked up in 2016 they knew they fucked up and they knew that they just did a huge disservice to everybody else and they were just like we need to do good on this we're gonna go radio silent keep working on this game that everyone's already purchased and traded in and it's now $9.99 at Walmart you can literally buy it for $10 but we're gonna keep working on that game because we want that game to be the one that everyone you know plays because that's what we promised and I'd have been less mad about the game if they were like okay this is the alpha Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna release it's early just, alpha or early access. Yes, dude, it's two or... words: early access. Like that changes the whole That's psychology simple. of somebody yeah. like looking at a game, like going like it here's also, a full game, and then nothing that you said the game was is in it mm-hmm. compared to hey, here's an early access game. It'll get there eventually. Also, not releasing it at sixty dollars. True. Like it that game. That game should have released at thirty nine ninety nine, and it's like here is an early access title. When Fortnite released. That game is still in early access now. The Save the World, the actual like game part boy, of that yeah. game, Those is still, like you, yeah, right? it's still in beta. Like that's an early access game, and they just tagged on the battle royale afterward. They fucking made that in two months. But you can release this game and make physical copies and do all that shit, but still call it early access so that lets let, let people know that you're not done with it. You're gonna keep doing updates and everything's gonna be fine. And then they stick with it because they know those updates are coming. Where we bought this sixty dollar game and we felt ripped off because it was bullshit we was traded that shit in do you think I connor's gonna pick, find the do you think connor's gonna pick it up and play with us now or is he gonna here's continue the to shit on it here's the thing 
I told Connor about how awesome that it was now. Okay. But Connor has not played any... Like, the only game he's had the time to play is maybe two hours of God of War on the weekend. Because he got it for his birthday. Yep. So he's been playing that when he can. Yep. And he has his Xbox with him like at the, I Whatever guess, house where he's staying yeah. with everybody else. But he's only playing PUBG with like the people in the house and that's it. Uh, so he plays that every now and then when he can. But when, like he's usually studying and doing classes and stuff. So I don't think that by the time he gets out... He, so his graduation day... Is the day Red Dead Redemption Two comes out? <laughs> yeah, he's not fucking playing. So no as guys. a graduate re- graduation present, like he told his wife, like all I want is Red Dead Redemption Two. So he's gonna graduate, and with that being out, with Spider Man being out, with him still wanting to finish God of War, I don't see a world where he returns to No Man's Sky. I do not either. Not when it's like that. I yeah. can't believe he doesn't graduate until that long. Dude, it was long. He left in April. Yeah, I know. He's been there I forever. Don't understand. Even my Marine Corps boot camp is not that long. Yeah, I mean. Whatever, man. Whatever. He's stuck with it this long. I mean, keep going, I'll Connor. Finish it. We believe in you. <laughs> get it. And by the day when you get out, you're going to have a nice fucking Red Dead Redemption 2 to play. Hell yeah. And it's going to be a nightmare for us. Yep. It's We're going to be fighting over who's streaming because everyone's just going to be, I don't even care. If you want to stream, go for it. I'm just going to be playing it anyway. I'm just going to lasso the fuck out of everyone. Yeah, and see, like, Casey, and like, I don't know if you will, but all you guys are going to be playing, like, the story, and I, I'm just going to be hungry. Oh yeah, I'm gonna play story. I don't know what Red Dead Redemption Online consists of, but I will be there. Um, um, I'm sure it's gonna be a lot of shit. Uh, we if should, the, if, we if, should if, be finding out some shit about the game soon, should we not? No, we don't need to. But they, Rockstar, but they Rockstar's will. gonna be like, here's your fucking game. Yeah, well, that's not. Like and they're everybody's not, gonna eat it up. Yeah, they're, that's they're, all that has to happen. As much as they don't have to, they're not gonna release it with nothing. Yeah, because they're gonna get even more sales when they show like the online and what it, what, it, what it's capable of. And we're two, almost two months out. I mean, it's August now. Comes out in October. So, yeah, you gotta start showing it. Fuck, oh, it does come out in October. I think it's gonna happen this month. I think this month we're gonna I find think out so something too. about it. I think August is the month. I mean, um, I'm, already, I'm still pumped about Spider Man. Spider Man's my big one right now. Oh, yeah, same. Every video I see oh, on I that. I can't wait. It's it's yeah, it's so good. Um, I heard it, I, heard, I read today that the intro of the game is like the end of another game. Like, it feels like. The intro of this game feels like it's the end of another Well, game. that's how God of War felt. There's this huge, like, I superhero play God, I didn't, type battle in the beginning. I didn't play God of War. Yeah. Um, keep going. What are you been playing? Uh, nothing new here. Final Fantasy still because I paid for that monthly, so I'm playing. Oh, that's that. a monthly. Oh, what do you pay a month to play Final Fantasy Online? Eleven bucks. Hmm. So, but you get a lot of shit. Like all the fucking updates and shit are free. I like, did not know content. that. Yeah, it's a, it's that and God, uh, God, that and World of Warcraft are like the two yeah. MMOs you pay monthly for. Other than that, so yeah, so playing that and then Octopath Traveler, which is fucking phenomenal. I absolutely love that game. I have my second character now. Mm-hmm. I'm at a point where I have my second character. She is. Which character did you pick when you started? The thief. I don't. A lot of people pick the thief. Yeah. I think it has the most fun gameplay. I think that's Does the it? reason why. Yeah. I picked the thief, and then I went to the next town. I stopped at the next town on my way to like the next quest for that character, and I picked up. Primrose Skankaz. No, I didn't pick up uh, Primrose Everdeen. I picked up. I don't even remember her fucking name. She was the. She's a healer, but she's like the church one. She's the one at the church. And the girl's father's dying, and she needs to fucking go to, like, the thing and do a thing, because that's how it, like, transfers or some shit. And we went in there, and I just got my fucking ass kicked. But whatever the mom... It's, like, recommended level 5. I'm, like, level 8 with my thief, and she starts at level 6, and we got destroyed. I take back calling her a skank, because I just remembered the actual backstory of why she's a prostitute. And it's because, like, her parents or dad or somebody in her life was murdered by these people and she became a prostitute because she wants to get close to the people that murdered them by offering oh, them her goods fuck. so that she can kill them. No I shit. forgot about that part and for that I respect dude you're not a skank you're not out there God bless you. hustling hustling that body to make uh, to and make you're money. You're trying to get that you're revenge. You're trying to get revenge dude. <laughs> I respect that. I do. Other than that yeah those are like the, oh and I've been playing Mario. Yeah, I've still been playing Mario Tennis. Mario yeah. Tennis. How far so, did you get into the story mode? I'm still stuck on that fucking goddamn snow mode. Story mode's hard. Story mode's super hard. Like, I was like, okay, story mode's fine. And then you get to the boss fights of story mode, and they're fucking ridiculously hard. What I do love about I that level, game... I have Mario up to level 22 or 23 right now, and I'm trying to beat those fucking goddamn glass hands. Are you at the mountain? No. Okay, I'm in the snow mountain. It's the second boss, maybe. And they're fucking stupid hard. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I'm playing that. I'm getting mad. Um, but I am enjoying it. What I do love about that game is 
it literally is for everybody. It is. Because, so even people that, like, aren't used to holding a controller and playing a game that way, my um, fiancé's sister was just visiting us for a few days, and, like, Megan and I wanted to play, and we thought maybe it was a game she'd play too, so everybody that's anybody played Wii Sports. They played tennis in those games, and having swing mode in Mar Super Mario, Super Mario, not Super, we discussed this, we discuss in Mario it. Tennis Aces is just in the Wii game. It is. And you literally put it in their hand, and it's like, what do I do? And it's like, just swing. Like, play like you're playing tennis, and like, we had a blast with it. And it's that simple. Anybody comes over and they don't really play games, just toss them a Joy-Con and they can play Mario Tennis. And this is the thing. Um, when we did our... Rose Bowl. Rose Bowl Episode match. 1. Episode 1, which, by the way, if you haven't watched it, turn on the YouTube channel yeah, and check it house, out. It's in the housekeeping at the end. And, uh, we'll there. and uh, we played it, and I said, I tried to play this, and I didn't fucking get it to work. Mm -hmm. I have since then played it, and I figured out how it actually works, yeah. and oh my god, I'm having a fucking... Yeah. Fun time with yeah. it. Yeah, I love there's swing a, mode. There's a lot of like, it's super hard, and I love yeah, having challenges. Like, I love the ability to have challenges in the game too, because it makes it super interesting when they're like, "Do you mm -hmm. want to challenge it?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I fucking do." Those Joy-Con are so accurate. Yes, accurate, responsive. And yes, they're like, very responsive. And you wouldn't think that because like everybody thinks like, "Where's the sensor bar? Like, where am I pointing on the screen?" It's like you, you don't, don't need to. You don't need <laughs> you to. Just kind of know. It's got an accelerometer and a gyroscope. Yeah. It's good. It's like technology has advanced since the Wii was out. You don't need that shit. You don't it's need incredible. Yeah. I don't need an IR bar anymore. Yeah. Thank God. All right. Anything else? No. Those are my big three. Um, well, there's one that you forgot, but you also haven't played that much of it yet. Watch Dogs Two. Ah, uh, yeah. So I did play that. basically, when Watch Dogs Two came out, Connor and I both bought it, and we loved it for the single player story. You had a two, didn't you? No. Oh. I played it. When I had everybody come up and visit, when Doyle, mm. yep. Doyle, Rogar, and Secure came up, Rogar had it on his Xbox, mm. and I played it one time. Gotcha. And that was so, it. And I got about, I got less than what I am at now in the story. I, so. I love the game, love the Silicon Valley aspect to it, I love the California that they created, loved everything to do with the game, hated that it launched without multiplayer. Like, yes. you couldn't just get in a party of four people and just mess around, which I convinced two other friends to buy it too, and we all couldn't get in a game together. And it was just kind of annoying because I hate when games like No Man's Sky launch when they promise one thing and like even the back of the box says that you can play four player co op and you couldn't because yeah. it wasn't ready yet. And it took so a while to get it out. Eventually, too. like Connor and I just kind of beat the game, traded it in, and said whatever about it. But now that you can get it for fifteen dollars at Walmart, shouts to Walmart for having cheap prices on old games and ruining E um, three. Yeah, also that you fucks. Um, you can just we Checks can play, we can play multiplayer now and it's super fun because we can just mess around online. But what I'm getting most from Watch Dogs Two is I keep thinking about Watch Dogs Three. We know it's being made. They have said that it's being made. They put little teasers out like we know it's in production. Basically, two is so fucking different from one. Like yeah. one had a real serious tone, mm -hmm. and two dialed it back. Yep. And it's Made way a little more, more lighthearted, like more, more like millennial. Yeah, more fun. I think. Mm -hmm. I think a lot two, more fun. Two is a lot more fun and than one. Just more was. colorful and like more things you can hack and just the drone and the the fucking, drone and the fucking bot the, and all that jumper. Shit. Yeah, yeah, jumper. Yeah, it's it's awesome. And I keep thinking of Watch Dogs Three because I know the main things that Watch Dogs Three is going to pull from is the success of Grand Theft Auto Online. Yes. And also the other Ubisoft games, um, the Crew Two that I'm going to talk about next. Um, just the open world aspect, and that's what leads me to what Watch Dogs could be. The crew, too, is the United States. It's a condensed version of the United States, but you can take 45 minutes like Casey and I did and travel from New York City to L.A. And I think they could do a Watch Dogs 3 completely online, the same way that the crew is, the same way that Grand Theft Auto Online is, and have that United States aspect. You know, with you saying this, I just thought of something. How come there aren't as many video game crossovers. Like, I mean, Smash Bros. is probably, like, the biggest crossover. Yeah. They bring in Snake, and they bring in yeah. all these other characters. From like, but why not, like, companies internally crossing over to their own characters? Like that. Mm -hmm. Like, why don't you take the aspect of the crew and combine it with Watch Dogs? Mm -hmm. well, I mean, and, and like you just said, and have it be like, oh, I can hop in a car... And add in street races, but don't have it be like a racing mm -hmm. game. But let you I think have like add in street racing. A lot of it has to do with like so. Say for example, if the sales for Watch Dogs were great, sales Sleep. worth the crew were not. You combine those two, 
then people that are fans of Watch Dogs will think it's a lesser version of Watch Dogs because you're combining it with a game that didn't do as well and they didn't care about. Think that might have something to do with it. So like you keep you keep properties separate so that you can sell them separately. And uh, I mean, they, you can you can just bring in aspects like every Ubisoft game is the same. I mean, you have your tower that you get, and then you unlock this and unlock that. Like different points in the map, side missions. Like every Ubisoft game kind of borrows from each other, and it's like. I look at that world in the crew too, and just having this United States, and I'm just like, you can do this with Watch Dogs, and except those buildings, you can go into, and you can get out of your car, and you can do this and that, and like you have, you know, even 32 or so people in the world, and like, oh hey man, where are you? I'm in New York. Where are you? Oh, I'm down in Florida. Like, well, I'll meet you in fucking North Carolina. Like, that sounds awesome. Yeah, it but, does, and it's awesome in the crew, but it's like you can't get out of your car. You're not doing other things. You're not yeah, you're shooting just a weapon. You're yeah. driving, flying, boating. So whatever. I think is. Watch Dogs Three is going to be awesome. And like knowing that we're so far away from the next Grand Theft Auto because Red Dead's not even out yet, and they're not going to release that anywhere close to when they release Red Dead. Watch Red Dogs Dead Six is the next gen game. Yeah, for sure. There's no. They're gonna. They're gonna milk Red Dead for at least a couple years. I mean, oh, absolutely. Two, three, four years before they even want to announce. Three Grand is Theft like Auto. the minimum. Before they even announce it, and then once they announce Grand Theft Auto, then it's gonna be out. Unless Grand Theft Auto is gonna be like the first AAA big title to be like, we're announcing this game. It is out next Friday. You know They'll what I never mean? Do that. Rockstar will not do that. Who knows, man? I'm they, calling it. Rockstar is known for just like keeping pushing back dates and pushing back dates. Grand Theft Auto could be ninety five percent done right now, but they're just like we're not going to talk about it because Red Dead's so close. And then all of a sudden you're just going to be like it's out in a week or it's out in a month. You know what I mean? I don't think Rockstar will ever do that. Look how long it took could them to be push amazing. this game out though. Yeah. And they're still not saying like, shit Because about it's it. been so long between Grand Theft Auto 5 and Red Dead. It's been like, years. You know that the next Grand Theft Auto is like, got to be close to being done. Because, but, the, yeah, and you have to think about this too. Like, Grand Theft Auto 5 came out on PlayStation 3 yes. and Xbox 360. So and like, then it made the jump over to PS4 mm-hmm. and Xbox One. So and it just got that, the updated shit and then just added down. To so think that, years. To think that Grand Theft Auto 6 isn't like pretty much almost probably done right now is nonsense. Like, I think that game is very much close to being done, but they're not going to even say a word about it because that hurts Red Dead sales. If you announce that Grand Theft Auto comes out, you know, a year and a half from now, then it's like, some people will say, oh, fuck that, I'm just going to wait for Grand Theft Auto, I don't need Red Dead. People that are more fans of, Re- of Grand Theft Auto will do that. And they don't want to hurt their sales, so they're not going to say anything, so they could just shadow drop that out of nowhere. And that would be incredible. But anyways... I feel like Watch Dogs 3 is going to be like that open world GTA type game that's going to fill the void while we wait for the next GTA. Yeah. And I think what like I I can guarantee Watch Dogs 3 will be out next holiday season and they're going to promote the shit out of that because they know people will be getting tired of Grand Theft Auto at that point. They'll move down to Red Dead Redemption and Grand Theft Auto 6 is far away and they're just looking for that open world game and I feel like that's going to do so well. It's got to the Crew 2, also awesome. Casey and I have been playing the shit out of that. Um, uh, like I've said, it's... it's play a racing game other than Forza for the longest time. Forza's the only racing game I really play other than Mario Kart. And The Crew 2 is everything I've ever wanted in a racing game. To call it my favorite racing game of all time seems foolish because it's so new, but it might be. Like, it's literally just got everything that I would want in a racing game. You know, you've got... Regular cars, monster trucks, dirt bikes, um, you know, your hyper cars, any form of racing you can think of, drag racing, you can do it, and you can do it at different tracks all around the U.S. And in between those races, you can just ride around. There's giant skate parks that you can ride around in with your dirt bike or your monster truck. You can do tricks and backflips and shit and while you're doing a race, and it's just one of the best, if not the best, racing game I've ever played. And they're, they're constantly updating it. They're adding new cars and new updates every single month. And I don't know. It seems like a lot of people are sleeping on it because they're already dropping it in price. It's already on sale. And a lot of people are streaming it. Yeah, because I just feel like the crew didn't do that well. So the crew, too, also won't because people aren't giving it a chance. But, like, I, was, I went out on a limb. I watched uh, one stream. Andy Stone, what's up, dude, if you're listening? I watched one stream of somebody playing it and was just like, what do you think about this game? Should I get it? They gave it nothing but praise, went out, got it the next day, and I did not regret it. I played so much of it. I got so into that game. And I still am. Lone Man Sky just kind of took over a little bit. Right. I have not played the crew at all yet. Oh, it's so good. 
dropped in price. How much is it? <laughs> I think thirty nine was the sale price yeah. that it was on. I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, and other than that, uh, Go Vacation came out on Friday. <laughs> for the Switch. Last Friday? Yeah. So Go Vacation. That's out? Go Vacation was a game oh. that came out back on the Wii. God damn it! And it, is and it it's, good? Okay, okay. Here's the deal. Okay, I'm ready. It's a Wii game still. Uh. Like it, it kind of feels and plays like a Wii game. It's a little clunky, but like. The whole idea is just like you're on this giant island and it's open world. You can go to the fucking taco truck and get some food and you can you can you can go find a dog and make it your own. Then your dog will follow you around the you entire place. You just kidnap someone's dog? Yeah, I was just a, I think it's a stray. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want your dog. Pick up some scrap it. dog. And Fuck you. Yeah, I don't know. It's just playing it with my fiance is fun because like she's playing an open world game, which like isn't something that she just hasn't ever done or would do. And like. We Kind of ride around together, and I'll be like, "Okay, what what event do you want to do next?" And she's just like, "I don't know. Do you want us to explore for a little bit?" And I'm just like, "Yes, yes, that's exactly what I want to do." But yeah, you can skateboard, you can inline skate. Makes you want to skate for because technically it's like an open world skating game at, at times. So, True. um, biking and snowmobiling and snowboarding, and it's just all sorts of stuff. And all there's like 50 mini games in it, and it's just fun to just like go do a few of them. Um, Nothing worth running out to the store to pick up. Nothing worth sixty dollars, I don't think. But like, it's I'm having a good time with it, I suppose. And I'm about to start streaming a lot of games on Xbox because I have a new streaming setup that I'm that I'm using. Which I just got super excited. I know. I don't really know if like what I'm doing. Like, is the stream next thing like pushing to two different locations at the same time? Is, is that allowed? Do they frown upon that? <laughs> so I was gonna like explain my whole setup, but I won't. I will say I can now stream laying down in my couch on both Mixer and Twitch, or in my bed wherever I want to lay, with overlays and alerts as if I was sitting at a PC, and it's incredible, and I'm very happy about it. So yeah. So our streams gonna look similar now. Yeah, because. Like I was telling Alex I earlier. I didn't, I didn't. I don't know our whole contract deal with Twitch. Fuck it. Yeah, that's pretty much what I say anyway. So but what I'm I was like, telling Alex earlier, like the it's whole. Just like man, I'm gonna do what I want. Fuck the whole you. reason this is so great is because of Xbox. Xbox partnered with Mi partnered. Uh, no, sorry, Mixer partnered with uh, Lightstream, which, are, which is a company that lets you put on overlays and stuff into your streams without actually being at a PC. And then it just kind of, you go live on Mixer and it just throws that on top of it for you. And it's incredible. And once again, Xbox is doing all the fan service in the world for people that play their their system where Sony is just putting out good games. It's pretty much all they're doing. Their firmware updates don't have anything worth writing home about and they're not really doing anything that is close to what Xbox is doing with backwards compatibility now on Xbox and Xbox 360. Um, their Xbox Game Pass that they offer, EA's Early Access that they offer, and now like this Mixer uh, Lightstream integration, they're doing great things for everybody, and PlayStation, you need to take note. You just watch the PS5 will just fucking destroy oh, and that streaming shit. Oh, dude. You're like, yeah, get all your shit out now it's, and show us dude, what you're doing so we can fucking do it It's 2018. If the next generation of systems don't have complete like streaming integration into them where I can just go online to playstation.com upload all of my overlays and all my alerts and everything that I want on a stream and just go I live from PlayStation. I guarantee you're not going to be able to do it on a PC. Or go to their website and do it. I can guarantee I mean, that. If, if that's what, you, what Lightstream is. I mean unless they partner with somebody else that does it for them like Xbox is letting you do that by going to Lightstream setting up your overlays and just going live from your Xbox. Right. So it's like if PlayStation wants anything close to that then... Yeah. Send your shit Firmware 6.0 is uh, coming out soon. Beta starts, I think, next week. For what? So, uh, PlayStation. Firmware 6. Oh, there's a new... Yeah. What is it? Is Nobody knows yet. Oh, okay. They just sent out, like, the... Whatever, for the beta, for anyone testing. We've it. teamed up with Twitch to do over... Oh, my God. <laughs> I would shit myself. I, would, I, I will literally go on this stream right now, drop, draw, and just fucking shit on the table. Oh, God. Uh, no more banned from YouTube. That's fine. Okay. So that's the end of that segment. Oh, we do we do news next. I'm glad we just spent a fucking like half an hour talking about uh, what we've been playing. It's always happens. It always happens. It always happens. We'll, we'll, we'll run through the news quick. The news won't take long, I don't yeah. think. It's a lot of it's old. I also know I'm going to do the news in reverse because I did it from what? Oh, okay. I was like, what do you mean? I did it from uh, the oldest to the, or the newest to the oldest. So we'll get to the newest stuff last. Sakira. Oh, dude, my ass is asleep. 
Uh, I played it a bit. It's, I sucked, but it was fun. Uh, see what you know what you're talking about. Lazy stream. Yeah, dude, lazy stream is laying in my bed tonight, probably playing skate or something. I literally can just lay there, and it looks like I'm sitting at a PC, and it's professional as fuck. I played like three games, so I'm keeping PlayStation. No, I know how awesome Xbox stuff is. Yeah. Xbox is just so great right now. Game Pass is awesome. Nine ninety nine a month, and you get all of their first-party titles. Halo 5, uh, Sea of Thieves, State of Decay. You're going to get Forza in a couple months. Uh, it's awesome. I love it. I really, really love it. Um, let's jump into some news. News? Oh man, this is going to be such a long podcast. I think you were talking about XCOM when I said I played it. We didn't talk about XCOM. <laughs> we never talked about XCOM. She's, she's You're hearing shit, man. She's You're hearing it. She's drunk. Alright. News. Now on to some news. Um, all is kind of quiet in the world of games because in the summertime, nothing releases. Yeah. There's always that weird dry period where it's just like random one-off titles, but the holiday's upon us and we just got out of spring and winter. And I'm just happy that we're finally in August because all we have to do is get through August and then we're in the best four months of the year. We are. My favorite time of the year. It goes from the best four months of the year to the best three months of the year to the best two months of the year to the best month of the year. So it's like it doesn't end. It just gets better and better. Hey, we, oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> My bad. I was trying to figure out what the fuck you're talking about. Respond to stuff real quick. Why? Because she asked me early sister. Oh, Secure got it. Didn't need to pause. Secure got us. Didn't need to pause. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. There's a lot of fucking theories coming out about Infinity War. Like, I don't know what the deal is, or Avengers 4. There's a lot of shit coming out right now. This is an important podcast, okay? I mean, I didn't, I didn't think you I was like, you're not recording it. I Here we go. Something. Let's go. <laughs> I'm like, you're not recording. All right, go. Uh, uh, I get married in September also. I know, I got the invite. You didn't RSVP yet. It's you were the one fucking texting me being like, well, how do I RSVP? <laughs> I'm going to I'm going the website and it's not letting me. I'm like, dude, it says when you get the invite, you can RSVP. You I just got to save the date. I just skim. Yeah. I just skim, but I will do it. Yeah. I'll just bring it over. And okay, so the invitation just says haddock. It's a crab stuffed haddock, if that changes your mind also. But Wait, what's the steak then? I don't know. Fuck. On the wedding website, it lists what each thing is. <sighs> but on the invitation, it only says like the one word. Like She just wrote like chicken, steak, haddock. And, mm-hmm. our, and we had one of our friends text and us. And vegetarian. We had somebody text us and just be like, I'm going to need a better description of what the options are because that wasn't enough. And... I understand, and I agree, but don't take that up with me. <laughs> um, so here we go. Let's go. News that happened within the last, like, 30 days or so. The story of the culling 2 is one of my favorite, <laughs> one of my favorite stories I forgot this. that yeah, happened please. in the last 30 days. Go ahead. I'll just read what I just, wrote on the just, website. Just take um, us one. At this time, it was last week, but this was a couple weeks ago. Um, so they surprised the developer. I can't even pronounce it. ex whatever. They surprise announced The Culling 2 was being released just one day after the trailer found its way onto the internet. Literally, trailer came out, game was out next day. Um, reviews and reactions to the game were not very good due to its many changes from its predecessor, and it was 1999. And in the world of Battle Royale games, when you have Fortnite for free that you can just go play, when you have H1Z1 for free that you can play in a PlayStation, uh, you can't release a Battle Royale in 1999 that's a shittier version of both of those. Anyways... Um, and yeah, literally a week later, the game was being shut down completely. Uh, refunds were being offered to anyone that had purchased the game and they are working on having the game pulled from all the digital stores and they are now shifting their focus back to the culling, the original, the original, and it's going to be free to play (laughs) because that's the smart move. And uh, even though the game, like you could log in and get put into one and there'd be like eight people in the entire game playing. Who does this? Like who puts all their like resources into making a sequel to a game that that you know everybody's going to hate and then a week later being like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to pull that bitch. We're going to pull that bitch out. You're looking up stuff about movie pass right now. (laughs) This is a game podcast. You're going to talk about about something else. You want to talk about movie pass? You can come to the other one that we're doing this Uh, week. I'll just show up. Because we're going to go all into movie pass in that one because it's a whole thing. I'm just reading it. There's keep talking. I'm I'm giving it one more week and I'm canceling it. I am doing the same. I'm going to go watch like 
Ant Man, and I'm gonna watch like two other ones, and then just because you case two, before I get fucked. You can't watch any new movies until at least two weeks after. Yeah, they come fucking out. dumb. And only certain show times are gonna be available. Fuck that. It's we'll, fucking, we're gonna get it's all, gonna be like okay, if you can go to the noon showing, like bitch, I'm at work during the yeah, day. Go fuck we're yourself. gonna get all into that on the Funny Business Podcast this mm. week. I'm sure Kevin's got a lot to say about it because he. I would this love shit. to hear what Kevin he, has he to say. called this shit too. Oh, He's, absolutely. He cannot wait to talk. Everybody about it. could see this coming. But uh, anyways, back yeah. to games. Calling two. <laughs> That's some trash. Better. Next news. Um, Microsoft creating a cloud-based system. Trash. Next news. It's not. It is. So, See, they're, they're, listen. They're your doing, internet can't even handle no, this no, no, fucking no, no, streaming no. half the time. My, mine isn't, but they're making two consoles. There's going to be the one that's a regular console that plays games, that does everything it's supposed Why? to do. Why? Why not just make one ones. fucking console? Xbox loves to do this thing where they make 60 fucking consoles. Mm, because you gotta think... Because it's stupid you, you gotta and think outs- fucking... You gotta think outside the U.S., where internet is extravagant and you can just get amazing speeds and amazing internet at the cost of nothing. And yeah, because they don't have fucking net neutrality. Yeah, but, o- but over there, like, this is a great idea. If they've got internet that is that wonderful, then yeah, there are people that don't want to buy physical games because it's just clutter and it's a waste of space and they just want to have a system that they can just download to. It's cheaper because of that. And it's yeah, not just cheaper because then you're paying. If I want to buy fucking No Man's Sky mm-hmm. on PSN, it's still sixty bucks. If I want to go buy the disc, it's fucking ten. But listen, to me, hear me out. If you like us, bought No Man's Sky the day that it came out, and then they made all these updates two two years later, you can just re-download it. You don't have to rebuy it because you can't uh, uh, trade in a digital game. So you would, you, I would you, love you, to you trade. You would just have You it can trade in a digital game. I know. On Xbox, Steam, you can. Steam, you can, too. Xbox, they, uh, Steam X, had again, it. Xbox. Steam. If you play it for, like, Steam. less than a certain amount of hours, then you can, uh... Steam, same yeah. way. You gotta play it less than two hours. Pretty awesome. Or no, less than 20. What? Something. I don't Some know. fucking dumb. Well, there's so many games that I would do that on PlayStation. I haven't traded the game on Steam in, so... Yeah. The summer sales and shit. Well, yeah, I don't hate this idea as long as you're making two. If this was the only system they were coming out with, I'd be like... Fuck you guys! Just went back on every th- good service that you did, but if they're just work, they're working on two. Totally fine with that. Make make both of them. Just make a lot less of the cloud one because like not a lot of people are gonna buy that one. But make it an option for people that do want it. This is the thing that pisses me off of this is these assholes are out in Silicon Valley where their fucking internet is extraordinary. Yeah. Like motherfuckers in Alabama in the backwoods aren't gonna be able to fucking yeah, do this. Yeah, but that's shit. the thing is, like, like, that system's not for them. I, it's you not. know what I mean? And but for the people in Silicon Valley that have that fastest shit internet, it's for them. Yeah, and it must be fucking nice. By all means, like have two different SKUs and sell that to them. Yeah, no, we aren't. We don't Fuck care. No. But it's not for us. It's for them. Um, 2K is now publishing NBA Playgrounds. Wait, what? NBA Playgrounds is now called. Uh, fucking. Do uh, I have to re-download it again? No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> so NBA Playgrounds Two was supposed to be coming out. By now, it would have been out. Yeah. Game got, like, all of a sudden just delayed. Nobody knew why. It just got halted. And then it came out that 2K actually, actually oh, bought them out and they're producing those games that's now. That's cool. So, NBA 2K Playgrounds 2 will be out this year, sometime later on this year. But, yeah, 2K... Why? has got to put the fucking 2K logo on everything? I think 2K, <laughs> 2K just wants, like, a fucking stranglehold on the basketball. They really do. They have Like, a they know NBA Live is out there and they, like... They know that they're better and than they them. just laugh at and it. And they just don't want another basketball property out there. They were just so they're just, let's just make them ours. It's an, and it's different enough where it's not a simulation. It's obviously yeah, an arcade basketball arcade game. game. Yeah. So they're just like, we can buy you guys out, we'll release this thing, and that's totally fine. They're two completely separate things. True. And you can integrate them and maybe have some sort of like way where they play together if you buy both. Sure. That's I, fine. I'm okay with that. The game's fun. Me too. I, and um, two case does good things. And on YouTube right now, we have our NBA Playgrounds uh, Rose Bowl video where me and Alex go head to head. Oh in, shit! Uh, yeah, that's that right. That came out, didn't it? Today, so it's nice. available now on YouTube. Um, next, not today uh, uh, when you listen to this. Yeah, a few days ago, but it's there. Um, Nickelodeon Kart Racers is coming this fall. I got so excited me for too. that. <laughs> so Nickelodeon Kart <laughs> Racers, like, yeah. a Mario Kart inspired racing game featuring Nickelodeon characters from past and present, races its way into store shelves October twenty third. Fuck the, See what it did fuck there, the there. present, yeah, dude. Um, the game will feature your favorite characters and tracks from twelve different Nickelodeon franchises such as Rugrats, SpongeBob SquarePants, yes. Hey Arnold, and more. Hey, sweet. Um, or dog. I, basically, what I saw is you can be Reptar racing through Tommy Pickle's house. I'm okay with that. That's, that's, that's all I need. Sold. Speaking of that, what? if I could have a remake of a game, the Rugrats game was Search fucking Search No. 
Not Search for Reptar was the one I played the shit out Was it? Where, like, you mm-hmm. were... Maybe free, it was all Free World and Tommy's House. And Tommy's House. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Search for Reptar. I, oh I, I streamed that, that a little while ago. That game fucked Which, phenomenal. we're gonna get into that in just a little bit. Um, yeah, that game's coming out. What's that? I'll stream it on a TV. Where? Steps. Oh, nice. You got that, you got that fucking mount up there, huh, girl? On TV. Um, so, that's exciting. It um, is. I'm super excited for anything old school Nickelodeon. Ooh, you're gonna buy it on Switch? I feel like it's a Switch game. It's a Switch game. It's a Switch game. It's, it's a game game. where, like, if somebody comes over, but, like, I'm not, like, like cooking my PlayStation. In the 90s. Yeah, I don't need, like, high end graphics for this game. Yeah. Or any extra. I'm power. all about it. It's probably not gonna be a great racer. It won't be Mario oh, Kart, God, but it's no. like, it's gonna be you're buying it for the nostalgia. You know what yeah. I mean? You're not buying it for anything else. And I knew a game like this was coming because Nickelodeon announced that they are back into the games and they're gonna be working on games. And nobody really knew what that was going to consist of. I hope it means a remastered Search for Reptar. So do I. <laughs> Who the awesome. fuck knows? Um, this one's fun. This is a fun little no, news no, no. bit. I don't want it now. So, no, 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 it actually is. You okay. like this. Atari games are coming to Teslas. Oh, I did see that. Yeah. I saw that you post that. Elon Musk Instagram. took to Twitter yesterday to let everyone know that in about four weeks, you will be able to play classic Atari games on your Tesla via the V9.0 release. Um, according to IGN, Musk didn't outline a detailed list of the games, but he said they are hoping to release Pole Position, Tempest, and Missile Command with the new release. Pole Position is said to be linked to the actual car steering wheel while in stationary position. This is the weirdest fucking story. <laughs> so Musk. you're sitting in your car and you can I'm just going to play my position. Atari! <laughs> oh my it. god. Okay, so well, he's Elon a crazy Musk. son of a he bitch, He is dude. so fucking weird in the best way. Like, he just does the most random shit. He's like, oh, boring company. I need you guys to make a flamethrower that we can sell. Yeah, did you see with the movie pass situations? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody tweeted at him, which is like, you hey, fix Elon Musk, can you fix movie, no- no. movie pass? And he goes, no. <laughs> it was the funniest fucking thing. You, did you see the whole, uh, how the guys that make uh, um, Borderlands reached out to him and they were just like, hey, can we put that flamethrower that you made inside of our game? And he's like, sure. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So, yeah. Oh, good old Musk. Um, a couple more here. Um, games with... No, this is the last one? Yeah, it's the last one. God, I told you to get through the news Just quick. I right on through it. Would. Um, games with gold and PlayStation Plus. Can't remember. Uh, the new additions to your... Free, free library games that you... I'm speaking like a robot because I lost the way that I was t- t- saying that. Xbox games with gold, PlayStation Plus. You get free games each month from both. Here's the ones that you're going to get. Um, PlayStation Plus, you're going to get Mafia 3, Dead by Daylight, for PlayStation 4. Um, Bound by Flame and Serious Sam BFE for PlayStation <laughs> 3. Uh, Draw, Slasher, and Space Hulk on Vita. Games with gold on Xbox, you're going to get Forza Horizon 2 uh, and For Honor for Xbox One. And you're going to get Dead Space 3 and Epic Mickey 2, The Power of 2 for Xbox 360. The better value was PlayStation. I mean, there's just more games offered. But I, their, IGN has a breakdown of who, of like which ones and what the dollar worth of them all is. Uh-huh. I think the fact that you're getting four honor for free on games of gold is pretty awesome. Like that was a big, still isn't sixty dollar game. Full, no, isn't it going free to play though? I thought I that no was idea. a huge thing. I was like four honors going game. free to play and all this shit. Four honors fun, but possibly it's shitty. It's um, I Forza Horizon Two. That's cool, but like. Forza Horizon 4 is about to come out, so why not just add 3? You know what I mean? <laughs> but whatever. Yeah. 3 is awesome. I hope that gets added to Game Pass because I have the DLC for it, but I traded it in because I know 4 is coming. Um, I, I'm excited about Dead by Daylight. I love Friday the 13th, and since it's basically the same game, just with Michael Myers, I'm and all Freddy about it. And like a few other... You see this woman across over here looking through the window? Do you think she's going to like, like murder them? Wait, where? Oh, look at her. Like, is she looking to murder or is she locked out? Uh, she might be locked out. Yeah, I think she's locked, locked out. out. She probably locked out. Um, Mafia 3. I hope a lot of people play it and, like, get some enjoyment out of it for free, but it's I'm not. Right. It wasn't a fun $60 game. Awful. That's for damn sure. The game sucked. I won't yeah. sugarcoat it. Sucked. Sock, bro, sucked. That's it for news. Which really, it's a quiet time. It it's is. A, it's a hell of a quiet time in, in the world of games. But by the time we do this next podcast, fucking, we're, we're either going to be on the heels of Spider-Man or it's going to be out. So, fun thing. I'm fucking so okay. Never mind. All right. What's up, chat? Hello. Um, Steph. I'm glad you're here. Hello, Steph. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Oh, God. Maybe. 
What if you're me and own the original Atari in awesome condition? Condition it still operates. Uh, do you own a Tesla, Sakura? Because if not, then this doesn't affect you at all. <laughs> Um, drive and play, ten out of ten, best way to crash. Yeah, only when you're in, when you're stationary. Okay, you can't just be driving and. Playing. I wish you could drive. You can't be driving. I gotta play. fucking take <laughs> this one. <laughs> like you're on the highway and it's like ah, the turn's coming up in pole position. Like, I have to turn. I gotta go. Yeah, I love watching people play Dead by Daylight. Good idea, because I haven't watched anybody play that game. All I know about it is what I've read here and there. But I would love to watch people play it this week before I. I'm gonna watch that at work tomorrow. Yeah, I always keep a stream up because like sometimes I get sidetracked and pop- keep a stream because hearing somebody talk in my ears is, like easier. So I always pull up a stream while I do work because it just like helps me focus. And that's what I'm gonna watch tomorrow. I'm gonna search them. Do it. I've sure, watched the says trends. can it drive itself? Yeah, but I'm pretty sure if you turn the steering wheel, it's gonna respond to that. Sad face, like, like, oh, like and they just disconnect. The yeah, steering disconnect. Wheel. Like, there's no way to say wheel. it. And now you can just like put the kid in the front seat. They can just drive around like this. Just make it super advanced, like yeah. a disconnect when you're playing a game, and then reconnect if you hit a certain mm-hmm. button, exactly. so you don't run over civilians. Like the exactly. Fucking oh god, this is gonna be the longest part. I'm telling you right now. I feel like it's not. It's more just listing. Dude, Dude. have you seen my list? Yeah. So, so what's the structure gonna be? I don't know. I broke it up into yeah, Sega, yeah, Nintendo, like Sony. What we should have done is get the dates of everything that was released. We don't overlap anything, but like no. we're just gonna go. With no, it. we're, we're not gonna go. overlap. I promise. Yeah, we won't overlap. Well, I have some weird. I have some shit on here that I'm surprised I even remember. No, I mean like if I start talking about PlayStation and you haven't talked about the SNES yet, you know what oh. I mean? Like I want to go in order, kind of. But we'll, we're gonna we're gonna do it the best we can. Fucking okay, NES is what we gotta start with. The thing came out in 1984. Yeah. First of all, you gotta figure out how to play spell Genesis. Yeah, no. <laughs> Genesis. <laughs> I was typing quick. That's genius. Yeah, you were. Alex took all his notes for this podcast when he got here. Yep. So I've he's always worked best under he, pressure. He's like, it gets done. I did. I mean, technically, I did mine at three thirty today. So I'm no. I work better. best under pressure. Yeah. All right. So chat, keep chatting away, and we're gonna keep. You guys going do you on to the next segment. So. You can just listen to us talk. All right. On to our main topic of the day, um, and also of the month. And, you know, we only do these things once a month, so really it's the topic of the month. But it's the topic we're talking about right now. Um, I wanted to do, I was listening to, I think it was the IGN PlayStation Beyond podcast, and they talked about their favorite games from each of the consoles. And I thought to myself, I want to do a podcast on our favorite games that defined each of the consoles that we own. Not just PlayStation Every console that we own, we're not including handhelds because that just gets messy and be a bunch of Pokemon and Mario ports. So um, we're just going to be focusing on your home consoles and just the game that defined it. Not necessarily the, the best game to come out on it, not even your favorite game to come out on it because a lot of them you played after the fact. This is the game that defined that console while you owned it. So if you were you know five years old when the Sega Genesis was out... You, there may be of games that were way better than the ones you were playing, but you played the ones you played when you were that age. Dude, I had better. no fucking reserves from my parents on what I played, so I played everything. Well, that wasn't even that. It's just like I, w- I didn't get super into games until within the last decade, I'd say. Uh, so like so yeah, gro- been, growing up, I've been I just, a little gamer since I was a little sport. Yeah, so like I played games like – I mean I played a shit ton of games, but they I wasn't super into them and reading magazines and going out of the internet until like way later on. Sega. Uh, I was saying it in my head, but I didn't want to say it out loud because like nobody's gonna know what the fuck we're talking. About. So the first console that I ever owned was a Sega Genesis. My parents got it for me and my brother, and I was very, very young. So while there were tons of games that were out, you know, Streets of Rage, which I definitely played, um, that other fucking one that was out, Road Rash, all these other games that were out, I definitely played them. But those ones don't define the console for me. The only ones that really do are Doom, which is my introduction into first-person shooters, and Sonic the Hedgehog. One, two, three. What? We'll get to it. Okay. So those are the only two games that I really, really remember playing on the Sega. Was Yeah, we pl- I played a shit ton of Sonic with my brother, and we took turns playing Doom all the time. There was another game where I was like in space, and there were inverted controls. It was for the 32X expansion. But ah, see, I didn't think you would have had the thirty-two. I didn't have the thirty-two, and that's what I separated the thirty-two X from the Genesis. So and I separated the CD yeah. So from the there Genesis. wasn't there two Dooms? There was Doom and then Doom thirty-two X. Yes. Okay. 
So, yeah, I definitely played the 32X and all that shit. Um, it was super annoying to have to fucking flop that thing into the top part of it, but... Oh, um, yeah, that big fucking But, yeah, thing. really, other than that, like, I didn't play... I remember playing Dude, Beavis and Butthead. Oh, yeah. But, like... Was getting a concert ticket yeah, for War. But, again, yeah, like, those fantastic. don't define they did that not, console no. for me. That's one, of my fa- that's one of my favorite ones I remember playing as a kid, mm-hmm. but it, does not, it doesn't define that console. Because yeah. it was, like, one of those one-off games of, yeah. like... You got pushed aside. For me, it was Doom and Sonic, and those were like the two that I remember obsessing over. Go ahead. Oh, man. Okay, so the games I remember playing the most on the Sega Genesis are obviously the Sonic games, mm-hmm. one through three. Zombies Ate My Neighbors, which is a huge one I play. Streets of Rage, one, two, and three. Gauntlet, Altered Beast, Shinobi, Toe Jam and Earl, Earthworm Jim, Golden Axe. Earthworm Jim I played on my cousin's PC. Yeah? Road Rash. Uh, Mickey's Castle of Illusions and Battletoads. Hmm. So those were like the big ones. Yeah, and again, if, like so many of those games I've played since. Yes. But just not then. When I pl- and for me, like growing up, and this is my brain just associates these three, these three with this console. Mm-hmm. Definitely Sonic, Zombies Ain't My Neighbors, and Toe Jam and Earl. I played the shit out of Toe Jam and Earl. I was super excited when they announced a new one was coming. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Sonic is definitely. I still play Sonic to this day. Like, the old one, I've got Sonic Mania that I still play on my Switch. Yeah. Like, Sonic uh, just... Sonic Mania, greatest Sonic game and, of all time. And, okay. Wait, what? Sonic Mania, greatest Sonic game of all time. Yeah, I... I think I, it I, takes I, everything from those first three, if you want to count four, and just makes them into the best version of Sonic. Alright, that's fair. I really enjoy Sonic Mania, and it reminds me of the old mm-hmm. ones, just with better shit. Yeah. So, it's fantastic. Um... This is the only time I'm really going to mention Sonic. I mean, I'm going to mention it for one more console, but I didn't want to put Sonic for every console. Even because right. it's like, put Mario for fucking everything. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I didn't want to do that. But for the Genesis, definitely, because that's the introduction of Sonic. You had Sonic 1, 2, and 3. You had mm-hmm. Sonic uh, Spinball. You had Sonic yeah. uh, fucking Dr. Mm-hmm. Robotnik's before he became Dr. Egghead. Remember Pokemon Pinball for the Game Boy? Yes. Oh my god, dude. It had like the little like rumble thing on the top no. of it. That game was so It was like your first good. introduction to like rumble features. Oh my god. So <laughs> but yeah, so definitely uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm going to say it's probably the highest of the list. I played a lot of Shinobi though. Too. Nintendo Switch, Pokemon, Pinball. That'd be cool. Because you got the fucking you play yeah, handheld and, and it just like it and they, they would rumble and shit. Burr. Yeah, that'd be oh, sweet. Damn. Um, but like you said, you said Doom. I have Sega 32X on here as a separate category, and Doom was my big definer for that one. Yeah. Because Doom was like the only game that succeeded on 32X. 32X didn't move on. No. And then after that, I'll just go right into my next Sega one. Go for it. Uh, Sega CD. Mm-hmm. Eternal yeah. Champions and Sega uh, Sonic CD. Sonic CD introduced Metal Sonic, which was fucking cool. So that's one I remember the most. Mm-hmm. So Sonic Sonic CD was awesome for the. Uh, Sega CD, which died out quick, too. Do you want me to do the other Sega? Um, I don't know. See, we're going to go in order of, like, when they were released, but that's too hard, I think. Yeah, it is, because... Um, I didn't put them in... Keep going. We'll, we'll go through all, all those, because after that, the Sega kind of dies, because they don't make consoles after that, so... Know, go on to your so next sad. one. <laughs> Just go on to your next the one. The last Sega console... The, I can't believe this console failed, either. It was so good. It was the first console I have online, multiplayer, everything else. Second Dreamcast. Gamecast. Oh, I love the Dreamcast. You remember Malibu's Most Wanted? Yes. Have we talked about this in the podcast before? We've never. No. no. But well, I know what you're talking like, I know it. He's like, I yeah. Got, I got Dreamcast. I can't afford it. No, he's like, I got Gamecast. He's, and then one of the other guys just like, I mean, there's Dreamcast and there's Gamecast. He's like, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. I got Gamecast. <laughs> no, Second Dreamcast. And the big games on that are Shenmue, uh, Jet Set Radio, Crazy Taxi is like the game from that fucking console, mm-hmm. which is fantastic. And Legend of King Soul Reaper, because that's what I played it on originally. And definitely Shenmue, because it was like a huge open world game. You could interact with everything in the world. The story is fucking phenomenal, which is why 18 years later, the fucking game's getting its trilogy finally mm-hmm. wrapped up if they don't go into a fourth one, depending on how this one goes. Which I'm super excited, because I got my email about getting my name put in the game. And... Uh, the uh, the other bullshit, the fucking PC beta information, and then the, how do you want your game? And I was like, I want a fucking physical disc for PS4 because I'm going to buy the reboot uh, or the remaster of 1 and 2 on PS4 as well. So Shenmue definitely my definer for uh, Sega Dreamcast. And, okay, so for me, the only console that I owned before PlayStation was the Genesis. 
I did not grow up owning any Nintendo consoles that weren't handhelds. I played Mario on handhelds. I played Donkey Kong on handhelds. I played Pokemon. I mean, obviously, I played Pokemon on fucking handhelds. So you need sure. to, you need to go through your. Uh, my your, NES or my Nintendo era pre yeah go through yeah so I'm looking right now you have NES Super Nintendo GameCube N64 did you own every fucking console yes well, the then, only thing then I run through those literally the only one I haven't owned is Xbox One because I'm so fuck I was so annoyed with it when they uh, announced and it. now they're just doing so many things right so I didn't include Atari and Jaguar because I yeah, own those yeah. two but I was just like I'm just gonna look at the main ones yeah. I figured you're probably Xbox. so young that like nothing defined them they're just whatever your parents pong. put in the fucking thing yeah. fucking pong <laughs> Uh, Mario Bros. Mm-hmm. are definitely defining ones, but uh, I want to. I really want to put Mario because Mario is Mario and Mario and Nintendo are just like one in the same. But Excite Bike is the one. Oh, and fucking Duck Hunt. Mm, uh, Duck, Hunt. Duck Hunt and Excite Bike are the ones I played the most, mm-hmm. and I still to this day want to play Excite Bike all the time because. Oh, I read that they were doing a new one on the Switch. Really. What did I read? You know that they, they reapplied for a trademark or something like that. Something, I saw something, something about is a going on yeah. with Excite Bike. I hope so. And same thing with Wave Runner. And I hope it's just so shitty that it's awesome like it used to be. Go on. Um, yeah, so definitely Excite Bike is going to be my defining game for uh, the NES. I want to put Mario right behind that, along with uh, Duck Hunt behind that, and then. Metroid behind that. Metroid pissed me off. I could never get very far in that game. I was little when I played it, so yeah. it kind of sucked. Uh, Super Nintendo, Donkey Kong Country, amazing. There are still levels that are prominent in my memory. And then Super Mario Kart was fucking just so the best. Did you not get obsessed with the two greatest games of all time on the SNES? Which ones? That is Super Mario World. Nope. Never and played it. Dude, you still have it? Nope. Super Mario World? Never played it. Dude. Wait, 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 wait. I take that back. I take that back. Wait, wait, wait. Is that Super the one Mario where it's like, wait, 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 wait. Is that the one that has Yoshi it's right It's for beginning? Yoshi, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did play that one. Okay, never mind. Fuck me. I fucking and completely forgot about that one. One of my favorite games of all time, Earthbound. Is that the one with uh, Ness? Yeah. No, I never played that one. Uh, for sure uh, never played Ness. Also known as Mother 2. Yeah, 2. I never played that one. I did play Super Mario Bros. My bad. Yeah. Earthbound Wait, is like... I've got it on there. <laughs> oh, no, no. I got it on there. Yeah. My bad. So, Earthbound... No, yeah. With Yoshi, yeah. That one's fucking fantastic. Yeah. Earthbound is... I never the, Is the it. reason Undertale is a thing. Earthbound yeah, is, yeah. The, is the reason... I mean, a lot of... I, I don't know. It's it's literally just like... It's an RPG that's just like set in this like modern world. And there's like alien stuff going on. And there's little like animals that you have to fight and it's just so much RPG and it's just oh my god I fucking love that game never played it I love that game so much everybody wants Mother 3 on the Switch so bad oh I know they do. and here I am just like I know Mother 3 has been out in Japan forever and then people have like ported it over and you can play it online whatever like give me Mother 4 like give me the new Earthbound for the Switch that's what I want right or Earthbound Remastered Ooh. completely don't I'd redone re- I'd play it then oh my god I don't have a Super Nintendo that works I have SNES one SNES Classic that's what you should get Oh, yeah, true. The SNES Classic was on um, clearance at our Walmart for 60 instead of 80 Stop reading chat. <laughs> I just saw the one. <laughs> Stop reading chat. Anyways. Um, audio listeners, we are doing this podcast live, and you can watch it too. When we go live, we will let you know in our Discord. And while we're doing these segments, we don't look at the chat, but we talk to them in between each segment. And Alex is is going against the rules right now. I He's s- looking over at it. I saw a pop-up. <laughs> Do up I have to I turn my... this away from you? Yeah, I got this. <laughs> Anyways, moving on to the next Nintendo console, the GameCube. Uh, Pokemon Coloss- uh, Coliseum. Colossus. Colossus. <laughs> Pokemon Colossus. Shout out with the Colossus Pokemon. <laughs> God damn it. Pokemon Coliseum. Uh, Luigi's Mansion. Just Shadow of the Glasses, but just like... Pokemon. Onyx. Yep. Just <laughs> fucking <laughs> Just has to climb Onyx. <laughs> and uh, Mario Superstar Baseball, actually. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Fucking Ooh. great. Because that's what got me to when I didn't put the Wii or the... Because of... I didn't give a fuck. Um, the, that's what got me to play Mario Baseball on the Wii, though, was mm. that game. Because I love that one. The only game I wanted on the GameCube was WWE Day of Reckoning, maybe? Yeah. I think. Yeah. I wouldn't... When I was at a certain age, all I played were wrestling, wrestling. and skateboarding games. Wrestling. That was it. Oh, fuck. I forgot to put Dave Nero on my list. 
Mm-hmm. Too fucked up. Keep going. Uh, moving on. Uh, so Pokemon Coliseum would definitely be the defining one for the GameCube. There's not a lot I remember playing on it or any major titles that were like super standoutish on it. Mm-hmm. But N64. We're on to Goldeneye, mm-hmm. Perfect Dark, and Pokemon Snap. Mm-hmm. And I don't know which. I honestly can't pick. What, where is Mario? I told you I was only putting Mario on one. <laughs> where is Super Mario 64? Man. Oh my god, man. This fucking you are way more into Mario than I am. I guess, man. Because I, I missed out on so much Mario like, I played, up. I played Odyssey and I was like, man. Oh my god. I was like, man. I'm collecting fucking moons. Oh, it's so fun. Anyways, I just played that again last week just to go collect more. The game's beaten. I just want to go find more. I don't give a fuck about finding more. <laughs> I want a purpose behind it. Not to unlock All I love it. In games, the number one thing that I want is just exploration. Yeah. Like, sometimes I'll just turn on Zelda and just, like, run around and just shoot things and make my... In Zelda, I can do that. In fucking yeah. Mario Odyssey, I can't. I'm like, I'm Knowing so... that there's fucking over a thousand moons in that game and I'm I only have, like... i fucking lazy to go hunt Like, like I have, like, two hundred something. I'm just like... I'm not the rest of I'm like, it's not gonna unlock dick for me. I'm gonna have a yeah. fucking list of moons. I just like cool. The kind of no games, one wants to see a screenshot of the amount of moons I collect. The kind of games that like I enjoy playing are the games that I can just like relax and play. Like I don't want anything hard, anything stressful. Like I just want to like sit down and just be like, I'm just gonna go find some moons. If I don't find any, it doesn't matter because I have the game beaten. Now I'm just gonna like wander around and have a good time. And it's like a little puzzle trying see, to find that's where they what are. skate is for me is like same. It's go and explore. Yeah, go and explore and doing some. I'm gonna do a trick off the staircase. We will no never hard. do a podcast that we don't talk about skate. That's EA, true. EA, fuck yourselves. Anyways, Goldeneye, Perfect Dark, Snap. Uh, I can't pick between the two in all honesty because Pokemon Snap has its own special place in my heart. Of I just love. The mm-hmm. photography aspect of it, just looking at Pokemon and mm-hmm. doing that shit. And there was a reason, and it was actually just like one of those one-off games that was super weird that was really good. And then Perfect Dark, I just have a bunch of memories of going to friends' houses and like plugging four controllers in and just fucking shooting each other. I just, uh, I had that game on, uh, Xbox. Oh, Perfect Dark Zero? Because I got the, uh, Retro Collection. Oh, uh, Rare. Not Retro. Rare. Yeah, rare, rare Collection. Yeah, so I got the Rare Collection on my Xbox and that was part of it. Nice. I've never played Perfect Dark before. Oh, it's so good. It was like your first introduction, like, this was like the first game where you could see through walls and shoot people too. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was so awesome. Back in the day. So, moving on. That moves on to PlayStation, was, which, to the best of my knowledge, was the second console that I ever owned. The original PlayStation. Number one on my list, Jam Pack Demo Discs. Remember Demo, Demo Discs? Those Dude, are fucking great. Every single Jam Pack Demo, I think they did four a year. There's one for each season. There was one for each season. And yep. I got every single one. And every single time that we would go to Walmart, when it would be like a couple months or like the season would just start, I the first section I would go to is I would yep. go check that section to see if the new Jam Pack was out. Again, I didn't read the internet. I didn't know when things were releasing. Like, Same. I was just ju- just fucking running straight to that Those section to look so for it. so good, too. Yeah. There's... And I wish, and like, I've still got some, and I really want to pop them back in yeah. to see what the games were. There's so, so could, many like, games them. that like I never bought because I just play the demo yeah. over and over again. Yeah. I remember the Duke Nukem um, oh, yeah. Time to Kill uh, was was a, one of them. I the can't remember packs. what it was. There was one of them where you for, it was a fighting game, but you had the ability to turn into animals. So like mm-hmm. I remember turning into a fucking beetle. Weird. Like a stand upish beetle. I can't remember what the fucking game was called. But anyways, never, I can never remember. When I think of those jam pack discs, the two that I remember from PlayStation playing the most. Ape Escape. Oh, I played the fuck out of that one, too. And Tomba. Oh, okay. Tomba, the little pink-haired fucker. Yep. I never bought that game, but I played that demo so many times. Oh, my God. So I played weird. that demo so many times. And there was a Tomba, too. I wish I'd have put Ape Escape on this list now, because yeah. that's the whole reason my bought... parents bought a DualShock was the very first Dual... The DualShock 1 was you couldn't play Ape Escape without it. I bought Ape Escape 2 when it was on sale a couple weeks ago for right. PlayStation, so I'm excited to play that again. Fuck yeah. I haven't opened it yet. It was a couple weeks ago, and I still have because fucking no one has gotten any fruit to and all that other shit. Other shit. Um, anyways, I also had Cool Horror. Orders on the PlayStation. Ooh, good one. I was always I was into extreme sports as a kid. Extreme sports. I have a wrestling. snowboarding game, but it's not on the uh, mm. PlayStation. It was on the N64, so it's not 1080. Nope. We'll get there then. Yeah, you'll um, get there. Cool Borders. I, again, I was all into extreme sports and wrestling games growing up, and then literally that's all that I played. So Cool Borders and also Sled Storm, a snowmobile race. Yo, game. that game was fucking sweet too. I forgot about the Sled fucking Storm. Fucking Rob Zombie played every yeah. time you turned it on. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And my dad. Loved that game. Like, oh, my, so mine. So my dad bought my Xbox 360 off me um, whenever I got like the, the next generation of system. 
And like he still has that down in the basement. He's just like, can I uh, can I get sled storm on it? And I'm just like, no, Dad, you can't just get sled storm on it. But it was a different snowmobile racing game. He got on it, but sled storm, awesome again. Extreme sports games. I was all about uh, the Crash trilogy and the Spyro trilogy. Goes without saying. Everybody played the those games. I remember that I didn't. I don't even know if I owned any of them. I constantly rented them from the video loft down the street, and my cousin owned them. I miss going to like stores to. Yeah, rent you shit. say that, but at the same time, it's like the, if the you, one game I remember renting all the time, like my parents would take me, or my mom would take me, and I'd rent it was the fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles yeah. game on like the Genesis. Or the thing that like I that. tell the people all the time is like, you think that you miss like going to the store to get Just that shit, yeah. but then like everything you buy comes from Amazon that gets delivered to your door. It's like no, you think you miss that, and like the nostalgic part of you does miss that, but at the end of the day. You love being able to fucking pop on Netflix and just watch a movie that way. So. Oh yeah, fuck yeah. Oh, not movies. I'm just talking about games. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Cra- game Crash sucks. and Spyro just go without saying. Those were just like everybody's core PlayStation games growing up. I didn't play Spyro. We talked about it I earlier. I did play Spyro, but it wasn't a big deal. We talked mm-hmm. about it earlier. Rugrats: Search for Reptar. Yes. My cousin and I played that game so much. We beat that game to completion, and it's it was so fun. I re I played it again a couple months ago. Oh no. the controls are wacky, dude. Yeah, <laughs> they're just wacky. <laughs> you're playing as Tommy, just like trying to find everything, like in in the house or whatever, and you're constantly hitting things. He's going, <laughs> 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 like, he just makes this weird hiccup sound every time he hits something. It's super fucking weird, but uh, it was so fun at the time because I was obsessed with Rugrats. Oh yeah, absolutely. Other games. I know you're going to mention Metal Gear Solid, so I'll let you take that one. My brother bought that game. He loved it more than I did. Yeah. In retrospect, now I love it more than he does, but he was obsessed with the time. Uh, the SmackDown games, like I said, I was all about wrestling games. SmackDown, SmackDown 2, Know Your Role, loved them all. Um, and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, obviously. Oh, yeah. But the one that I don't know if anybody remembers, remember the Extreme games? One Extreme, Two Extreme, and oh, Three Extreme? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot about where it was those. like it was only a racing game. You're yeah. just racing, but like you were inline skating, skateboarding, yep. mountain biking. Like you picked which one you were doing, oh, which those, discipline. Oh, those are so yeah. good. Yeah, and you were just racing down a mountain. It's like oh, you just remind me. Of, those you, just, you just remind me of another game that's totally going on my PS2. You don't have time. You gotta start listening to them now because I'm done. Oh, Dave Mira Freestyle BMX for PS2 Again, or PS1. PS1. No, no, no. BMX no, what you said though with Extreme, it reminded me of a game on PS2 that mm. I always played that was fucking. But yeah, I don't. I, I just I was in this. I was in this fucking phase. I was in this phase of extreme shit. And all I played was extreme sports games, which is probably why I like pine for like skate and all those games nowadays. Go. PlayStation. PlayStation. Crash Bandicoot. Yeah. Obviously. First one, not good. I'm sorry, but the first what? the first Crash Bandicoot is so Loved it's it. so fucking hard, and it's like that's what made it good. No, no, no. It's annoyingly hard. It's no. frustratingly hard for you, maybe. The only time I've ever gotten mad at a game was. A year ago when Crash Bandicoot came out and I was trying to beat this one level and it was just this stupid, stupid part that just shouldn't have existed at all. I don't remember what it was, but like I threw down my controller and bounced onto the coffee table and knocked both me and my fiance's coffees over. Luckily there were iced coffees, so it's not like anybody got burned, but like all over the all over the sofa and everything and I yeah, love Crash I'm not proud of myself. Crash played- Bandicoot three warped, fantastic. A little bit easier, you had like the motorcycle races in there and just different stuff introduced love warped don't know about two i think that that one's not as hard as one but like one makes me one's so the best. mad i love all three of them but one's definitely the best uh power rapper the rapper mm. can't mm. go wrong with kick punch it's all in the mind another game i played in the jam packs yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't mm-hmm. even need to it's on ps4 mm-hmm. now with the remake. Yeah, i know never um, bought it played that shit on the jam pack the original tomb raider oh um, yeah played that on pc did you? I'm like, at my cousin's I house. I didn't Dude, include PC. My cousins had more games than I had, and they're both girls. Oh, you girls. Not that that means anything, but it's like back then. Your it's cousins like, are cooler than you were. Yeah, you didn't <laughs> think that like you know that like females played games back then, but they did, dude, and they had more games than me. So don't let anybody tell you that girls don't play games because growing up, my cousins played more than I did. <laughs> That's impressive. I know. Um. Yeah. Original Tomb Raider. Uh. Obviously, Metal Gear Solid down here mm-hmm. for PlayStation. So, defining the console. Oh, yeah, we gotta pick one. I forgot that we wanted to do that. Yeah, at the time. Okay, so for the time uh, period, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna give you two answers. For the time period, if I was fucking nine or ten year old me, I would say Crash Bandicoot because I didn't. My brain could not wrap its head around all the complexities of Metal Gear Solid. Going yeah, same. At this age, same. Metal Gear Solid, hands down. I am going to say 
Jam packed demo discs. <laughs> They're so fucking good. Like, just a jam packed demo like discs. Perfect game. Defined because, like, I think as a as a kid, like even now, I have like a short attention span with games, and like only I just want to play it in short bursts or like long bursts of just repetitiveness. And I was just playing the same demos over and over again. And, like this demo was like thirty minutes long, and I'm just like, that's good. Then I can move on to the next one. And I would just play every demo on the disc, and then I'd be done with it. Like, fucking oh, Tekken yeah. was on there and shit. And I would just play a oh, few fights that. in Tekken, and, like, you didn't have to change discs out. Nope. And you were just like, disc. play some play some Tekken, and then I'm going to go play this, and then play this, and then I'm done. I was played for an hour and a half. Moving on. PlayStation 2. PlayStation 2. Um, I think oh, right, right off the bat. PlayStation 2? Yeah, PlayStation 2. Once I had a PlayStation, like, I was sold. I, bought, I got, like, every system after oh, that. Oh, all right, go ahead, then. PlayStation was the one that just, like, got me in there. It was the defining yeah. console, all right. Um, so, I think right now I can give you my defining game, and that's Grand Theft Auto 3. So, Grand Theft Auto really? San Andreas is better. Okay. San Andreas is the better Grand Theft Auto game, but I only rented that when I had a PlayStation 2. I never had it. I only had Grand Theft Auto 3, and that was the game that just... I think it kind of introduced me to open world games, because no other game really was that I played before that. That was the my introduction to, this is an open world, and I can do whatever I want. In that bridge that was closed, that you had to like be a certain part of the story to get over, but you could, like, I don't know, you could like, do some cheat code where you like got like a flying car, and you could just fly over and get over there. I thought it was so fucking cool. And yeah, that game just blew my mind as a child. So, okay, quick story. Mm-hmm. I don't have Grand Theft Auto 3 on here. I have Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Mm-hmm. I had three, but I didn't play a lot of three. Like, I thought three was great, but I didn't play a lot of it. However, San Andreas, I, my parent, for whatever fucking dumb reason, this is like one of the games they wouldn't let me get. Mm. So I had to borrow three. Give him all that praise earlier, and now I'm taking games away from Just this one. Just Grand Theft Auto. And I ended up getting it anyways, because I have great grandparents that don't fucking look into things. Mm -hmm. And that's what this story's about, is I didn't, I had three, but I borrowed it from somebody. And then I gave it back to him because I was just like, okay, it's fun, yeah, whatever. Because I played the original ones too, the top down, fantastic. Um, but San Andreas, like, my, gr- I ended up talking my grandma into buying it for me while we were down <laughs> at, down at, down in Syracuse at the mall when it was still electronics. What are these? Yeah. Grandpa's trying to buy the game. And that's exactly what it was. And I was like, that's nothing you need to worry about. Yeah. Blah blah blah. And they're like, you knew, you know, this isn't for kids, grandma, right? It's fine. Yeah, I murder them. Picked it up and played the. Fuck out of it, and like yeah, there's dude. like the map and like the gameplay and all that stuff. It's so yes. awesome. It's so good. Five, or, or, six. Or, 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 six, six. Let us get fat again. Yes. Let us or eat and work out and it was get fat. so good. Um, did you finish your games? No. Go ahead. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Again, wrestling games. SmackDown versus Raw was introduced in the PlayStation Two era. Smack. Oh, wrestling games is the is there are the only series of games that I've purchased wrestling. every single year since the beginning. Of I, I don't know, last twenty years. Like every single year that yeah, THQ, Ups, fucking now Two K, whoever releases that wrestling game, I still purchase. I think they're redoing the same thing over and over again now, and it makes me so angry. And we'll have a show that we're going to talk about that completely. But for some reason, I still like. For nostalgic reasons, and just because I hate to break tradition, I still purchase the new wrestling game every single year. But SmackDown vs. Raw on PlayStation 2 era, uh, Bully was a huge one during the PS2 era, um, and uh, other than Dave Mira, because I already talked about that, Tony Hawk's Underground. Oh, one and two. Because two, so two was basically Viva La Bam, the video game. <laughs> what? And, I, and I, again, <laughs> really I was, was so into that type uh, of thing back then, then I was all about the Viva La Bam shit. But I think if I define the system other than Grand Theft Auto 3, it'd be Tony Hawk's Underground. Because that was, that was such the awesome best game. skating game. If you could just make me a remastered version of Tony Hawk's Underground... With skate but, controls? With skate controls and like a less of the bullshit. We've, talk, we've said it in the previous podcast, just like... Don't let me climb on telephone wires and like do all the. Like, no, that was so awesome. Yeah, but it's unrealistic. I know. So sim it up just uh, a bit. It's so fucking fun. No, the game was awesome. Go. Uh, PS2, SOCOM, US Navy SEALs, and I think that's gonna be my defining game for the console, just because it's the first game that I was introduced to multiplayer. In. Mm. It had the I had the headset and, I, and everything. Dude, dude, you had to buy like this weird. Thing you had to, to buy this huge yeah. fucking adapter that went in the back. Yeah, of it. I I remember like trying to look that up on the internet how to figure it out, and I was just like, this is too fucking complicated. Yep. <laughs> so that was my big one because it came with the headset and everything in the box, and I was like, could talk to people, and it was fucking awesome. It was See. before it was before everybody started fucking my mom and everything else. Multiplayer shooters. 
we're gonna get to next. Probably on my next one because this. Um. Uh, yeah. Before uh, I was told to kill myself and kids were fucking my mom. <laughs> SoCom was fucking awesome because it was only like adults and no kids. Um. Max Payne. Metal Gear Solid 3. I skipped 2 because 2 was meh. Uh, San Andreas, which we already talked about. God of War, Gran Turismo, whatever one it was. And Smuggler's Run was the one that I was reminded of when you said uh, Extreme. Because it was just one of those weird open world racing games, but it wasn't a racing game. You were a fucking smuggler and you were literally just transporting drugs across the map and it was great. So I would definitely say Navy SEALs takes the top spot, but then followed right behind with Max Payne, because Max Payne was just one of those games that I just enjoyed heavily. So, after the PlayStation 2, that's when I was introduced to the world of multiplayer gaming. And I went without a system for a while. Like, the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 had been out, but, like, I just, like, was into different shit and, like, wasn't playing many games at that point. I was just still randomly playing PS2 whenever... And then one day, I literally remember sitting on my parents' couch and I was just like, Halo 3 looks fucking awesome. And I just, I remembered looking at multiplayer games and just like looking into like, oh, you can just play online and get together in a party and talk and play games. I'm just like, this looks fun. Texted two of my friends, Connor, Brian Minkler, and was just like, let's all get Xbox 360s. Let's all do it. Let's all get them. I, it was right before Christmas, so Brian and me decided that we were going to wait and we were just going to get ours for Christmas. Connor was the only one with a job at the time, so Connor went out and bought one, like, the next weekend, and he was the one that, like, first started playing, and yeah, we were just, we just dove the fuck in, and the game for me on Xbox 360 that defined everything got me reintroduced into the, into the first-person shooter, introduced for the first time into multiplayer gaming was Halo 3. I absolutely adore that game. It's the only shooter I've ever been good at. I used to be number one every single time we played Team Deathmatch. And, uh, I don't know, that game just, like, did it for me. Pro there's probably better first-person shooters, but because that was the one that, like, I played with multiplayer, that just, like, you know, encompassed everything. And, yeah. So we're going to Xbox 360 right now. And Les, what, what was your transition there? What did you go from PlayStation 2 to? Xbox. Yeah. I think everybody did. Because it just had the more inviting online. I remember like what a big selling feature for me was the PlayStation 3, you could only chat if you were in the same game. Yep. Xbox 360, you would just get in a party, yep. which was the huge selling point for me because like it so many like, times... That, that was a huge thing for everybody. I mean, we used to That's, play online together on Xbox 360, yeah. play UFC and shit. Like, yeah. We would do little tournaments with like me, you, Minkler, and Mark Bingle, and like... Yep. We would like two people would play, the other two people would play, and then we'd go together and like yeah. or like we did a lot of and then all of a sudden I is a great console. Yeah, for I'd me. be playing with skate and you'd be playing something else and like we could still chat and they'd be like, yo, hop on, let's play this real quick. Like, okay, I'm just wrapping this up. Like what is very normal and what we do in games now at the PlayStation. It was a huge 3, deal back then. PlayStation three you couldn't do it. So I think everybody went to Xbox 360 then. So the other games... No, I went to Xbox, not Xbox 360. Oh, you had an original Xbox? Yeah, the big Fuck fucking 20-pound okay. tank. Let's back up a little bit before yeah. I get into I my like, love for Xbox I'm like, 360 I'm like, Halo fucking, 3. I'm like, you're fucking going. All right, go ahead. Uh, original Xbox, Halo, mm -hmm. Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic 2, uh, the launch title for the original Xbox, Crimson Skies, which mm -hmm. was amazing. Uh, Fable was a huge selling point for the original Xbox for me. Mech Assault. Ninja Gaiden, because that was an original Xbox only game, and the Forza games. Yep. So Xbox, huge, huge deal when it came out. Um, Halo, the first American system. Yes. Halo and Ninja Gaiden both have a special place in my heart. Mm -hmm. Um, say, uh, no, that was three sixty. Never mind. Yeah. So those two, big deal. I remember going over to a friend's house and trying to beat Ninja Gaiden fucking weeks mm -hmm. and weeks because it was like the hard it was like what Dark Souls is now it was like the hardest fucking game on the planet at the time and it was just phenomenal um but yeah my uh, Halo was Halo would probably define it though even yeah. though I, yeah, didn't, I, I didn't play original Halo first on Xbox though mm. I played a Halo on PC first with I, multiplayer and it was awesome it, uh, get into Halo 1 and 2 so that, like, I could have anticipated 3, got the Xbox 360 on launch, waited for that game, got it. Like, I feel like I missed out a lot during that time, but, like, I don't know. The experience I had with Halo 3, I guess, makes up for it. I'm going to bring up Halo when we get to 360. Okay, well, we're there now, aren't we? Yeah, I am So, now. Halo 360, 
other than Halo 3, which again, was just, I think, the game that defined that, that console for me, Grand Theft Auto 4 was the most hyped I've ever been for a game in my entire life. I was in high school, senior year, a group of like one, two, three, four, five or so of us all left school at noon that day, went to GameStop, all picked up our copies, went home and got online and it blew our minds. Like, yeah, you had like open world before, but like this was just like open world, do in whatever you city, want. do whatever. Like, I, like so stuff. many stories of just like, just getting in this, like the, the hilarity of just like somebody getting in your car and like, hey man, get in the car. And they would just walk up, open the door, and jump in your passenger seat. Like, that blew our minds. And just, like, being not having to do any missions, not having to do anything other than just, like, let's just go fuck off in this, in this city. And I, it's probably tied with Halo 3 because I played it just as much. Where And I don't think I've ever, again, been more hyped for a game in my entire life. Like, I counted down the days. We all left school. We all got at the same time. And I was on every single day. And whoever was online, I'd pop in there and we would just run some shit online. We go bowling. You can go bowling online. Um, other than that, the same exact feeling that you had for Grand Theft Auto 4, you had when Red Dead Redemption came out. Because it was just a follow-up to that, and it was just like, now I'm in the West, and I'm hunting fucking deer and shit. And, again, those games together, just like, Xbox 360 is like one of my favorite consoles of all time because of probably those three games. And also, the Skate Series. <laughs> the Skate Series plus Halo, Grand Theft Auto, Red Dead is everything that you would need. And like I could sell every single other game that I had and just have those, and I would have been happy. But other than those, I had Left 4 Dead 2 and Alan Wake. Oh, I forgot about Alan that. Alan Wake came out on my birthday, and I got oh, it for my birthday. So good. Mm -hmm. Alan Wake is just amazing. I heard rumors about an Alan Wake 2, but we'll see how Those that rumors have been going on for years. years. But yeah, Skate, Red Dead, Grand Theft Auto, Halo 3, go. Red Dead. Obviously. We both worked at FYE at the time. Yes. We put Red Dead in the... <laughs> we had, like, an Xbox 360, like, system in the store that, like, we're supposed to play this demo disc on. Yeah, and we, we said, fuck, fuck that, that shit. And we, we threw just, Red Dead in the store. put whatever game you wanted in there. Red Dead stayed in that so long. Our manager, Devlin, used to go on his lunch break, clock out, wouldn't eat. He'd just walk over there and play Red Dead for 30 minutes. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> it was just so fun. Uh, I forgot oh, you did that shit. <laughs> speaking of that, speaking of him, yeah. do you know he's divorced and everything? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not on a podcast, dude. I, you can edit it out. <laughs> we, don't speak a, we don't speak on divorce on this podcast. We talk about everything on this yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Grand Theft Auto 5. Mm -hmm. uh, 4 oh, was yeah. super impactful, but 5 was originally on that. Oh, and wait. 5 introduced a whole bunch of shit. The reason I don't have 5 on here is because I got it for PlayStation 3. Oh, I did not. Interesting. Um, Amp 3. You know how you were talking earlier about Star Wars? No, oh Amp God. 3. Amp 3 was Amp, the shit, dude. And Amp 3 is going to be my defining game for the Xbox 360. It was a, it was it was so a console awesome. launch game. Yes, it was. Uh, and that's why most of my games are like the launch titles because I yeah. got I get them all launched. And, and when consoles launch, there's not much to there's play. Not so. much to play. So yeah. that's like your burn-in memory of like, yeah. I gotta spend all my time in this. Just like uh, for PS4, yeah. it's NBA 2K, 20 whatever. years from now, when we think of the Nintendo Switch, we think Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Yep. That's all we had. <laughs> yep. Uh, State of Decay. Yeah. And the four, Fours of the fucking Horizon introduction. Cool. Uh, but yeah, definitely Amp 3 is definitely so my uh, definer. My that situation concept. was that I owned the Xbox 360 and was more than happy with it. But after a while, I started to see all these PlayStation exclusives. That and I eventually see, unlike you who just buys a new system, I would trade in like crazy. Oh so no, I, I have traded every in. Console yeah, no. I traded in my Xbox 360 toward getting a PlayStation 3. Ah. So Grand Theft Auto 5, when it finally came out at the end of that generation, I bought it on PlayStation 3. So the other games for PlayStation 3, I remember, which again aren't many because a lot of them were just I played an Xbox 360 instead. Were The Last of Us, Uncharted 1 through 3, Little Big Planet, Heavy Rain. In a little game called Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it's so good. If I bought an, a PlayStation 3 again, I should still have it on my account saved so yeah. I can play it again. Yep. They can't put it on PlayStation because of license, or PS4 because of licensing bullshit. But well, gotta love licensing. Mm -hmm. uh, PS3 games. Metal Gear Solid 4. Mm. That was a huge deal when that came out. Uh, the Last of Us, obviously. The Uncharted games, obviously. Mm -hmm. And Little Big Planet. 
Yeah. They're the big four. The reason that I got a PlayStation 3 and decided to get it over an Xbox 360 was for Uncharted and Little Big Planet. I thought Little Big Planet looked like the best platformer that there was, and I thought Uncharted looked like the best action adventure game that there was. And they really are. So, like, literally, that's all it took for me to be like, I'm leaving all of this behind. I'm leaving Halo behind because nobody else played it anymore, anyways. I was literally playing Halo 4 by myself. And I moved on, and I don't regret it because that lead led us to the PlayStation 4, which was the next system I got instead of the Xbox One. But in between those, we have a Nintendo. Um, I was gonna say that uh, the Metal Gear Solid Four is the definer of that console for mm -hmm. me. The Last of Us is hands down the best game for me on that console, even though Metal Gear Solid Four is literally more a PS4 game for you. What? The or Last of Us. It's no, so hard with those no, games. No, because I kept, I didn't put definitives in the newer. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't move. Um, right. The Last of Us to PS4 because yeah. it originally came out on PS3, so it's that console. That it came for. So, when Last of Us 2 comes out, though, huh. but this is where I got hard. I've got to put The Last of Us and Metal Gear Solid because both have their respective things yeah. of what they did for that console for me. Yeah. Like, Metal Gear Solid 4 was a launch, was more towards launch, where Last of Us was more towards the end. So, there's defining moments at both end and beginning of the console. But back to what we were saying, Nintendo. In between all of these, before we move on to like the now generation of systems, was the Wii and the Wii U. Um, I owned a Wii for a very, very short period of time. Oh, it I... was all the buzz. Everybody owned one, so I felt like we are my family. I didn't even buy it. My dad did because like he just thought like we should have one because everybody else did. And my mom thought she was gonna play Wii Fit because every other mom said they were playing Wii Fit. Yep. So I remember playing Wii Fit. I, I remember Wii running Fit. in place and doing the fucking ski jump shit. All that. I remember doing a lot of planks. I feel like a lot of the defining game for that system is Wii Sports. That honestly. is exactly what I was going to say. Is. But Wii other Sports. than that, Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2. I feel like those are the two games that just like took the Wii to like, okay, this isn't just like this family system that moms also own. This is a game that can produce two of the best games of all time. Again, you're just not a Mario guy that much, are you? Yeah, so you don't get it. He's I like the it. old school Mario. Yeah. I'm but then, new Super Mario Brothers. For Wii was also very good. That was time. fun. I like yeah. that. Remember one night, me, my friend Jared, and my friend Seth decided that we were going to try to be beat the entire game in one night. We got pizza and drank alcohol and tried to beat it all. We made it halfway. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's sucks. And Donkey Kong Country Returns was awesome on the Wii as well. Did you have any for me? I didn't. I, just sports. Wii Sports, dude. We Sports is all so I do. Because, like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I get sick of Nintendo rehashing the same shit over mm -hmm. and over and over and over again. Like, I've played, right. like, a thousand fucking Mario games. I've played a shit ton of Mario on the handheld games. Like, the RPG Mario mm -hmm. and all that shit. I'm like, oh my god, I'm fucking burnt out of Mario. So when the Wii U was, le was released. Oh god. I didn't buy it day one at all. Good choice. But after a while, like... I love, like I've said a million times in this podcast and to Alex before we started it, I love colorful, bright, fun, almost childlike but adult games. So Nintendo was obviously that. So like enough time went by where I'm just like, I miss that so much. So I needed a Nintendo system. That was the one that I was out, that was out. And I was certain, I was certain that a Pokemon RPG was coming out for the Wii U. Because I had that Wii U fucking pad in my hand, and I was just like, this is a Pokedex. I could I could approach a Pokemon, I could have the ball on this screen, and I could go like this and swipe up to the TV, and it would catch the Pokemon. And that's hey, little did you know that was coming to your yeah. cell phone. <laughs> and like, I had that idea in my head, and I was just like, it's absolutely happening, I'm buying a Wii. I traded in the iPad I had at the time. Oh, that sucks. To GameStop for credit to put toward getting a Wii and then spent like a hundred bucks on buying the Wii. Poor choice. So it wasn't because it, I did get to play Super Mario 3D World, which is amazing, and I want that port to the Switch because it's fantastic. Mario Kart 8, Super Smash Brothers Wii, and the I think defining game of that uh, system for me because it was it still is one of the greatest games ever for me. Super Mario Maker. That game is fucking phenomenal. That's it's like the only good game on the Wii. Amazing. Wii. That's like the only good game on the Wii. It blows my mind. Like you can make a million levels. You can download them online. They've got already preset levels there to play. You can go from Super Mario One to Super Mario, the new Super Mario Brothers. You can change the art style and like you can literally make a game in the Super Mario uh, Wii art style and then transfer it back to Super Mario Three. 
and it just like looks the way that it would there. And the whole technology behind that game is fantastic, and I can't wait until it gets ported to the Switch. God, I hope it does. Um, my Wii U game that's going to define that console in the worst possible fucking way because I bought it when it came out, and then I just fucking shit all over the Wii U because it's dance. so... No. No. Not this time. Zombie U. Oh. But that game rules now, I thought. Now, back then, it got old quick. Mm. See, everyone loves the zombie game that got re-released on like PlayStation and stuff. Yeah, they did it way better for that. Yeah. On that, it was because so Because you probably had to use awful. the fucking pad controls. You did, and, and it yeah. was fucking horrible. And then the lighting in the game was shit. You mm-hmm. couldn't see anything. And oh my god, I fucking hate life. So now we move on to current generation, which it was kind of hard to do because we're in this generation. Like, how do you say what you look back on is like the defining one when you're here? You know Easy. what I mean? But yes, it was kind of easy. So I'm PS4, looking at I had this. No problem. I didn't do Xbox. You go first then. Let me think. You want to think? Yeah. Uncharted Four. Huge definer. Mm-hmm. See, but for me, it was like that game came out. I played it. I lo- absolutely loved it. But then I beat it and I traded it in. Like it was just kind of like it was over in, in two weeks. You know what I mean? Yeah, I borrowed it from you and beat it in a day. Did you really borrow it from me? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, You're yeah. like, hey, I'm buying this yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna beat it. And like, we want to stream it. That was beat back it? when you were yep. doing Butterbox shit. You streamed it live. And yeah. You did it. Yeah, I yeah. Just yeah. Fucking knocked that. it out because I yep. did the 24 hour stream in the first three. Uh-huh. And I was like, I fucking love Uncharted. I'll play all three of them yeah, in one night. See, and then when Corey gets the fucking game, I'll go pick it up and then stream the whole thing again for that. It was. I'm just lousy with my money and buy every game, so everyone just like borrows them from me to stream and play in one day. So yeah, um, Uncharted. Um, I have three games for this list. Go ahead, Uncharted. Until Dawn, because that's a huge, like, exclusive that's mm-hmm. super underrated, but was amazing, I thought. I remember you streaming that, too. Yep, I streamed that one. And Persona 5. I got that on my list, too. Which so I've got Persona new. 5 on here. And I don't want to say any of them define the console, because the console's not done yet. Mm-hmm. But as of right now, those are, like, the three games that I associate with the PS4. The right. Most. Because, truthfully, it's like, when it's all said and done, we're going to have, you know, Spider-Man to look back on. Spider-Man, we're gonna have The Last of Us 2. We're going to have... And, like, this fucking, thing is Last I hate to say it, we're going to have fucking Anthem. Yeah. We're going to have Destiny You're going to have so many games to look back on. Like, this is, list is going to change, but for me... You know what Red I mean? Dead Redemption 2. You know what one of the main games that define the PlayStation 4 for me is? Rocket League. That game was released as a PlayStation Plus free game. I got it. Nobody else did. And I played the shit out of it. And then finally, like... I just like I, I share played it with people and just be like listen play this game you're gonna love it they all bought it and there was a time where I think 2016 whatever year it was that was my number one most played game that year because I played it so much has that come out on the Windows Phone has that one has it come out on the season on the, the Rose Bowl yet what oh yeah that was last week oh okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was last week. So that year you played it then. Did yeah. Help well, that it. was on the, it was on the Wii. It was different. <laughs> and I also hadn't played it in like a year. I played it on PC with mouse and keyboard. Yeah, that's true. And um, with an Xbox One controller. But yeah, Rocket League, I think. Persona 5. Um, Persona 5. So, so truthfully, good. let's... No bullshit here. The game that defines the PlayStation 4 for us is going to end up being No Man's Sky. It was a game we hyped up so much. We See, now this is not... And we're so upset about it. We talked about it for two years and then it finally got fixed and now it's amazing. I feel like looking back 10 years from now, we're going to be PlayStation 4, No Man's Sky. This is where I'm at with this, is I'm at that weird fucking point now with consoles where my shit crosses over. Like, you got Rocket League on PS4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played on PC. Now, Same with No Man's Sky. This cross-play needs to be allowed. And I'm like, so like, these games, nothing defines fucking PC gaming Mm -hmm. because PC gaming is constant and it's just a constant. So I can't define it. Like same with like other shit, like Left 4 Dead 2. Mm-hmm. I mean, I played that on 360, but I played it on PC first. Same with like yep. Battlefield. Like I'll never put a Battlefield game because I played Battlefield 1942 yep. way back. Yeah, back I mean we're we're in a same time with where Doom and all that. Those shit. games just kind of all cross Mesh, over. Yeah. Like, and and we're at a time where we're so I, yeah. And with this list, I looked at it as this game came out on this console. So the biggest difference is we are adults now. Yeah. We have jobs where we can buy more than one console. And before, it's like, you owned one because and that was you, it. it's all you could afford, and that was it. Where now, like, I own all of them. Like, I own the Switch, an Xbox, and a PlayStation. So when they're multi-platform games, like, they're not... It's kind of just, like, how I played it and how I remember it. And that's... Yeah. But uh, Grand Theft Auto V, again, I think I played more... I played a lot more of it on the PlayStation 4 than I did in the PlayStation 3. Everybody did. I mean, obviously, because you moved on real quick after that came out. It was released on PlayStation 3, and then it came out on the PlayStation 4, like, you know, months after that. Or no, the PlayStation 4 came out 
I, okay. It came out, and then I think that within within less than a year, it might have even been six months, the PlayStation 4 was released. I waited about three months into the PlayStation 4's life cycle until I bought it, and then Grand Theft Auto was re-released that following holiday season, like October. It came out the same day that the new WWE game and Little Big Planet 3 came out. Because I remember I got them all at GameStop at midnight on the same day. But I played way more of that game on the PlayStation 4. Because, again, when I got my PlayStation 4, I traded in my PlayStation 3. Because I was always a fucking traitor. So, Grand Theft Auto. I'm trying to figure out... This is me thinking right now. I'm, I'm like, in a zone. I'm yeah. pretty sure I played Grand Theft Auto 5 more on PS4 than anything else. Because yeah, I have it on... Everybody did. I had it on... Did I have it on 360? I either had it on... You might have, but it was a very short period of time. Yeah, I had it on 360 or PS3... Then I had it on PS or on PS4, and then I had it on PC. And I know my character is on PC now, and he's something. But I think I did the most leveling and everything on PS4. The other game that'll define this system for me, Star Wars Battlefront. Oh fuck no! I know, I know you, I know. Ugh. But I because you never played the good Star and Wars it doesn't, game. And, but like when that game came out, like it was when Star Wars was coming back. The Force Awakens was just about to come out. That game was released, and I was so fucking hyped for it. And just having a shooter in the Star Wars universe was just, like, all I wanted. I played so much of that game. If you looked at my most played games of all time, it's in the top ten for sure. If you looked I, at I, my most disappointing games of all time, shh, and the playtime on that game, I bet you I'm not even level fucking ten. Also, Friday the 13th. Ooh, yeah, that's a good one. Friday the 13th. PC for me, bro. So, Xbox One, system that you didn't have. The only one on the list that you don't have. Um, defining game, I honestly, oddly enough, Skate 3, because like, that's the main reason I got the Xbox was to play that again. But um, Master Chief Collection, Halo 5, and Sunset Overdrive. Sunset Overdrive is a great game made by Insomniac, people that are putting out Spider-Man next month. Can't wait. And yeah, the reason I got this system was because of Game Pass. Well, not when that came out afterward, but it was because of Halo. I wanted to play Halo That's the again. only reason I wanted an Xbox One. I missed it so much. And I couldn't justify it because, like, the games were getting so mm-hmm. fucking bad. Between so, 4 and I was like, oh, the end of 3 and everything else, I was like, I'm fucking yeah. done. In the last one, we discussed this. The Switch. Oh, I forgot about Switch. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Damn it's down. the defining game. I th- it, I still, I mean, we're more than a year out. I mean, we're a year Legend and a half out. Was just too fucking it is good. still my favorite game of all time. It's I, so I don't good. know a better game that I can spend that much time in. I mean, other than that, obviously, like Super Mario Odyssey and Mario Kart and Splatoon and Stardew Valley. I put on the list, too, because I play so I much play Stardew on the Switch. But I didn't put Mario Kart because Mario Kart was a yep. Wii U game, so I didn't put that. It's just a fucking port with yeah. all the extra shit. It's just Zelda, man. It, Zelda's so fucking good. And no matter what games come out, I think on the Switch, like we're always gonna look back on that one. Yes. Even absolutely. if Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild Two is better, like this one is just the defining one. It was the launch title. It was what shaped that system. For yes, us. absolutely. We're just gonna keep going because the new releases don't take that long, and then we'll talk after. Okay. Chat will be there in a minute. We just gotta, we're just gonna finish up. New releases don't take long, and then housekeeping will be done in five minutes. All right, well, that about wraps things up. Um, go on to new releases and games that are coming out within the next a little more than 30 days because I wanted because to include the last coming one. Out. Eh, it's not too bad. So August 7th, what we've forgotten is Overcooked 2 comes out. Oh, there are actually games coming out. Overcooked 2 is one I'm excited for. Overcooked 2 is coming out. I don't know what system I'm going to buy it for at all because I like to have the portable version on the Switch. Um, I used to say that I wanted it on PlayStation because I wanted to stream, but now with this new setup, I can stream a lot more on my Xbox, but I don't have two controllers, so I can't actually play with anybody on the Xbox, but it does have online now. It's all thing. I want the game, I just don't know what I want to play it on. So, that's that. Um, Madden NFL Hall of Fame Edition comes out on the 7th as well. For some reason, I'm still thinking we're doing games that define a console, and I thought you were saying Madden. No. New Madden, releases! Madden 19. I'm like, Madden why? comes out the next Tuesday for the, if you want to get the more spend more money for the Deluxe Edition, or you can wait until that Friday and buy it the same day that We Happy Few finally releases. We'll see if that game is good now that it's been through all the Rainbow. shit that it's been through. August 24th, a game called F1, which I'm assuming is like an IndyCar racing game. And a game called Little Dragons Cafe are coming out. Um, on August 28th, 
Fire Pro Wrestling finally coming to the PlayStation Hi. 4. Um, Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate coming to the Switch, which looks fun. And I think that's a game I might want to own on the Switch, so I've got my eye on it. Um, then a bunch of other ones nobody cares about. Pro Evolution Soccer 19. I didn't realize it was even still making soccer games. FIFA, dude. FIFA. Um, September 4th, the Destiny 2 Forsaken DLC comes out. I bet you kind of will get that. No, I don't. Actually, he got the deluxe edition. It's free. Oh, Connor, yeah. He got all the DLC included in that, I think. Um, September 7th, Marvel's Spider-Man finally comes out. The same day that NBA Live 19 and the deluxe edition of NBA 2K19 comes out. Okay. I'm intrigued by 2K19 because they haven't announced anything about it yet. All we know is they're a cover athlete. Yep. And we, like, they and waited until, uh, like... And that their poster LeBron's fucked up. And women are in the game. Oh, yeah. Lady, 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 lady basketball players. But what they didn't say was what the park situation is going to be like this year. They didn't announce, like, the park situation last year with, like, the city that you can run through and go get your haircut and stuff until about two weeks before that game came out. They waited until the very last minute to the point where people thought that it wasn't going to be in the game. They took it out. So... I, at this point, do not plan on buying NBA 2K19, but if they fucking be like, now you got a whole city, and you can get a bike, and you can ride around, and go from, like, town to town, like, then that's what it would do to get me to fucking buy it, and God damn it. But Spider-Man is all that really matters. Also, August 21st, Shenmue, Shenmue 1 and 2 remaster come out. They aren't even remasters, but they're coming out. 30 bucks for both. Pick it up. Worth it. You will. You should stream. I'm those. gonna stream the fuck out. Good, of them. because don't I worry. do want to see what those games are about. Amazing. Okay. Fucking Landy. Oh, man. You know, I'll just you know, you can just. Oh, bro. I'm I'm pausing because I can I add in the transitions in between. You know. I know what you're doing. And for housekeeping, follow us on all of our social networks because I I we I, have a ton of them. I do so much in the mornings and I'm so sleepy, but I do it anyways. <laughs> And I post all the news and I post all the different images on Instagram and the hashtags and all that bullshit. Follow us on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. It's all RSMRY Media, just like the logo. RSMRY Media. Um, and also, well, I got a new playlist. I put those up on the first of every month, so that went up yesterday as of recording this. A um, bunch of new songs by the 1975 and Chance the Rapper and Rock Hampton and shit. Listen to it. Tons of awesome music. You'll love it. Um... And our Rose Bowl series is going on right now on YouTube. Every week, Alex and I are playing a game, and by the end of it, you're going to have the first Rose Bowl champion. And right now, the fourth episode is up, or fifth, or fourth, or fifth, or fourth. The fourth episode is up. You can listen to that, and you can also watch it because it is not something that you listen to. But you can. You're going to get going on, too. Watch those videos and keep watching because you've got three more coming out for the entire series, whether I fail or don't. Because if it's yet to be determined, yeah, it's yet to be determined. But like what we decided is, even if I lose before the seven, or if anybody loses before those seven are up, we're just gonna do jelly bean bets for the rest of them. Other than that, two kind of announcements, but we're just gonna tease them now because they're just kind of in the works still. We're doing two new shows. One is a wrestling show. Alex and I want to do a show where we talk about wrestling games, wrestling. we talk about wrestling rumors, our favorite matches, just kind of that stuff. Whether it's going to be a Twitch stream thing or an actual podcast, we don't know yet. It's kind of in the works. We're going to decide what works best. It's, it's in the production. Yeah. Pre-production. Pre-production. Pre-production pre phase. Pre-pro. Pre-pro. Pre -pro. Um, we're going to figure that out in whatever the way that we think works best. We're going to get a wrestling show out there. I'm not sure how often we're going to do it, but whenever it's needed. And the wrestling will, will determine that. Um, and we've also got a new show that we're going to be doing called That 90s Show. Oh, yeah. Which is a, we're going to be talking about all things 90s. I, I feel like nostalgia is a huge thing right now. Obviously, everybody's talking about bringing back all these old Nickelodeon shows and MTV bullshit. And we just kind of want to have a show where we talk about 90s shows, 90s music, 90s um, movies, and 90s video games. We're going to stream, not stream, but we're going to do a playthrough of like... 15 minutes of a 90s game. We're going to talk about our favorite shows, our favorite movies, review some of our great. favorite albums. It's just Game Grumps. It. What do they do? Oh, you've never watched Game Grumps? I have, but like, what do you mean? Like, how would we... Oh, they, they literally games? start shit and then they never finish it. Mm. They're just like, oh, next time I'm on Game Grumps. And then it's just like, oh, they never, there's never another part to it. <laughs> this one we are actually doing. Oh my God, it's so fucking funny. I've literally purchased... It, it kills me. I've purchased a shirt, a hat, a coffee mug, a new... Uh,
a backdrop and a table map because I want to make it look like totally like just 90s and neon. It's going to be great. Yeah. I can't wait for it. Yeah, can't, um, we can't wait for you guys Kevin's going to be a part of it too because he's very good at like oh, really? reviewing. Yeah. I, like he's going to do different segments because he's so good at like reviewing and talking about things. Oh, okay. And like I feel like he has a different perspective because he's a little older than us. Yeah. So like he sees the 90s like through like a different lens of not being a child but being kind of grown up. So like yeah. I don't know. I feel like he has better judgment on some things, or we may think this one show. We should also one, like include. Yeah. Obviously, we can't include the footage, but like watch yeah. a clip from like some '90s thing that we oh, thought I was, was awesome. To. Oh, okay, whatever, yeah. whatever we have the rights to. You know what I mean? Whatever we can. We do. can technically do it under Creative Commons law, but we'll talk about that afterwards. Yeah, because we're signing it. So that '90s show, I can't wait for it. We're still again pre-pro. That's going to be a thing. What's great about that show is that it's never going to be not relevant because all of it happened in the past. We also have a decade of content we can yeah. work with. And we're not going to be talking about new things that are happening or new releases. It's all stuff that happened forever ago. So if we put up an episode tomorrow, you could watch it a year from now and it still exists the same way that it did. Yes. So I'm super excited about that. Same. And yeah, it's just going to take a lot of planning because I want it to be like super special. And it's not going to be live. It's going to be an edited, full-blown, like hour-long YouTube show or however long it ends up being. But... You have that to look forward to. So once again, thank you for watching. Follow us on social networks. Like, subscribe, follow. Just do all that shit that you have to do that people say to do just, at the beginning and end just of podcasts. fucking fund us. Yeah, just do it. Yeah, we have a Patreon it. now. <laughs> we had all this shit. We have a Patreon now. I cry at night because you guys don't follow. Even like, though, I don't like to open up emotionally, but even I'm though, fucking upset. Like. Even though last night, Patreon, anyone that subscribed with credit cards just didn't get charged. Every, so oh, you, 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 you have automatic renewals, so if you automatically subscribe to somebody with a credit card, Patreon didn't let you do those charges last night. The banks all declined them all. So if you if you are a patron to anybody out there, make sure that you switch over your card or make sure everything's good there. Call your bank, let them know that it was an authorized uh, purchase, and you should be good. And also... Wait, what kind of shitty shit's Patreon doing? Now? Become a patron on Patreon. You can donate different levels, and when you do it, you get different perks, and then it renews every month, and you give us money to be able to do things like this. You're saying don't do it? <laughs> what the fuck? How, how, how kind of sell is that? Uh, well, uh, I'm we'll, the counter humor. We'll talk to you next time. Yeah, bye bye, guys. I just like being counter humor. Don't do it. Let me save it right now before I fucking forget. Before I get wiped out by some um, dumb error. I didn't have to make a single point to where we have to edit anything. Oh, good for us. Um, so this was PC010. Just gotta record the intro once you leave, and then we're good. There's something I was gonna ask you, too, and I don't remember what it was. Nah, it wouldn't even matter, I'm sure. Probably. <laughs> Y'all have my unlimited data now, can I tell you that? Nice. It was a fucking extra. Eight. Was Woodard there? No. No. I was disappointed. After I told you he should be, I was like, wait, I think his day's off for Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, of course. Because he worked weekends, obviously, because that's when they get the most traffic. So, uh -huh. like, they all have, like, weekdays that they're off, and I think those are his, too. Ah. Uh, um, so, yeah, let me say that. Yeah, he wasn't there. I was like, ah, oh, fuck. So, I got some other dude, and the dude yeah. was like, yeah, something fucked up, so we'll just put you on the data for 10 bucks. And I was like, sweet. White box. Hey, that white box. Chat, how's it going? Um, blah, 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 blah. Four? Us, two. Yeah. There was four people in here for a while, so I wonder who that fourth person was mysteriously watching. I don't know. Because Step EA. was the third. Who was the fourth? Probably EA. Um, PS3 was for Assassin's Creed, Final Fantasy 13, Final Fantasy 14. No surprise there. And God of War. God of Wii played it for a week. It collected dust after that. I feel like that was a lot of people's situation with Yeah, the Wii. the Wii died out quick. Yeah, everybody got it because it was just like the hip, oh, trendy thing heavy. to get. Yeah. Hmm. He's there. Sturdy. An ex ruined your experience at Grand Theft Auto Five, and you gave your bro your account. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, because those transferred over to the PlayStation Four. No. <laughs> those transferred over. That's why X is uh, I may or may not have forgotten my Instagram info. Figure it out, or make a new one and follow Who? us. Because Who? Kira. Because I post a shit ton to the Instagram. That's the social network I feel like I use the most, and I'm pushing the most. I mean, I have like 560 followers on that bitch right now. So get on that Instagram junk. <laughs> uh, gotta catch up to the bowl I'm behind on so much yeah dude it, they're great I have to edit through an I'm at fucking 42 for this nice sweet. I have to edit those um, Rose Bowls every single Sunday and when I do like 
it's, it's, it, I enjoy it. Like, I like watching them back. They're funny. I, like, everyone is ended in, like, a certain way that's just, like, kind Comical. of suspenseful. And just, like, for us setting down the controller and letting the other person, like, just go for it. But then they actually start to beat us. Or the, the one that I think is going to be the worst is the next one, the Puyo Puyo Tetris. Oh because my it's God. not a good stream game. No. Because you have to focus so much. You have to put so all bad. of your attention into just, like, playing that game and you can't do anything else. I mean, it's still so good. Like, yeah, it's fine, but it's just, like... It's not the best It's one not a good stream game. When we do the rest of season two, that won't be in there. No, I've got, like, Puyo three Puyo. new games that I purchased for the for the um, Switch. Puyo Puyo got subbed in, too. We were going to do Overcooked, but we yeah. could not get no, Overcooked. Well, that was NBA Playgrounds that got subbed Oh, for that. NBA Play- yeah. We should have just planned on Puyo. Yeah. Puyo, I don't know why we planned on Puyo. Like, yeah. Puyo. We didn't think that one through. No, it's just not a good stream no. game. We, tried, we were going to do Overcooked, but Overcooked was being a fuck, and mm-hmm. you had to control two people at once, and it fucking sucked. Yeah. And we were like, this isn't going to work. Well, duh. My Final Fantasy Insta was important, and figuring it out, I legit just tried, and it was like, yeah. Figure it out, and give us that follow, because there's so much there. There's so much there. There is a lot on your Instagram, I'll give you that. I, 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 there's a lot of shit that goes Literally on. from the hours of 6.30 to 8.30 every single morning, I'm just like... Whoa. Because it's I have that time until I get to the work. It's like in the middle of the day, too. Um, some, if something happens in the middle of the day, then I will. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I'm like... Tipping, or you, it probably just pulls it up later for you. Oh, yeah, but if you look at the time it was posted, like, what at the time? 11 hours. 11 hours ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm posting between 6.30 and 8.30 in the morning, and I just, like, send it all then. But, yeah, see? Oh, same thing. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Rose yeah... We'll, we'll see. We're, 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 we're gone. It's, it. it's been so long. We're, we're going to do these things for so long. We do. It's been two, two hours. hours. Yeah. I'm hungry. I haven't even dinner I yet. I haven't eaten dinner yet either. Yeah, I, got, I, mean, I, I got out of my doctor's appointment and came right over. And I, and I, like, oh, and I don't even know if we have any food in this house. Like, you got cereal, right? <laughs> That's true. I can go I'm on. definitely having cereal for dinner. Guys. I don't think I have milk. Thanks for watching. Let's Fuck. catch some pokies and let's chat in the Discord. Okay? Okay, okay. Let's do that. All right. How do I end this fucking thing? <laughs> <laughs> I was like trying to, how do I end this fucking I was trying thing? to figure out how to do it on here. I was like, why are you doing that? We gotta do it on the iPad. Good.